What's going on guys? This is my entire Chicago Blackhawks franchise mode series in one video. Enjoy. Super excited to be using the Chicago Blackhawks here, trying to rebuild this team around generational prospect Connor Bedard. I feel like we're in a pretty good spot here, building around the best prospect since McDavid. Our GM name here is simply going to be Bedsy. Obviously, I expect him to be the star here of this series. So, look at the Chicago Blackhawks, guys. Top players there. You got Seth Jones, Taylor Hall, and of course, Connor Bedard. I feel like that's a pretty good nucleus. Will Jones and Hall be a part of this team? We're actually competing for a Stanley Cup. I'm not sure. I'm a huge Taylor Hall fan, uh, being from Windsor. He won his back-to-back -back Memorial Cup, so I'd actually love to get him his first ever Stanley Cup. Obviously, you'll have to wait and see whether that's possible. We're in the franchise now, guys. I'll show you what this team is looking like to start. Obviously, nowhere near competing for a Stanley Cup, because um, after the first line, there's pretty much nothing. So, that first line's actually not terrible. you got Taylor Hall now on the team, playing with Connor Bedard and Athens CU. Uh, Bedard here have actually upgraded to an 84 with high franchise potential. Also, too, I get in these... Also, I gave the shock and awe zone ability. I feel like that's what he's known for. We'll just get it out of the way, give it to him right now. So, you know, hopefully everyone agrees with that. I think most people will, but um, can't wait to see just how he kind of grows in this franchise. Again, 84 high franchise is 18. This guy's gonna be an absolute beast. Play with a couple decent wingers. Even the second line there, Radish, Reichel, Johnson's not too, too terrible. Third line there is also okay. And the fourth line's a pretty decent fourth line. I guess it's like the second and third line, which really aren't up to snuff. Um, in terms of the defense, though, it's even worse. So we got Seth Jones, who's pretty solid. Murphy's a solid, you know, defensive defenseman that can play in your top four. After that, though, I mean, we do get plus two, luckily, in that second pairing. To Nordy, Roos. I will say, Roos should have better potential than medium 7th D, but uh, it's one of those guys I just missed. Could only, you know, do so much here and get the franchise started. Mrazek there, 81. Sarvlin backing up's an 80. Again, not looking the best. Now, one thing I actually want to do, guys, is go and check out free agency. As I mentioned, I did fix it, but uh, there are still some players available. The top player, of course, would be Patrick Kane. In real life, I don't think there's any chance of him returning to Chicago. Watch him, you know, do it now that I said it. But because of that, I'm going to stay away. I'm as you can see, I lured him there to 86 overall. Guard of the zone ability, but he's still, like, a pretty nasty player. Very curious to see, actually, who he's going to sign with. Uh, below him there, Shane Pinto is an RFA. Same with Jamie Drysdale. No Gregor there that shows an RFA, but he's really just on a PTO with the Leafs. Phil Kessel here is actually the highest rated free agent that's not Patrick Kane. I figured, you know, Phil Kessel would be kind of fun there to leave at 80. I want to kind of keep his Ironman streak going. He's got the injury X Factor there. Could sign Kessel just for fun if he wanted to. Uh, Comtois there, I think, has a PTO with Vegas. Jesse Pugari is also available. Only 79 overall, but he's got lowly potential. A couple years left to grow. Could potentially be like a low 80 for us playing our bottom six, even actually when we're competing for a cup. Now, as I mentioned, guys, I didn't really think our forwards were that bad. Defensively, though, we were so weak. Uh, could sign Alex Edler. Honestly, it might make sense for us to do that. As I mentioned, just terrible, terrible defense. Um, Hayek there, I think, is also on a PTO with somebody. So, we got 42 contracts. Edler, if he plays, you know, somewhat decently. Let's see if we get him for league min. Could even make an offer sheet on Drysdale. The thing is... Uh, that's asking price, probably going to cost us, yeah, first round pick, which could potentially be Macklin Celebrini. One year, 800k. Okay. I would definitely be willing to go up like a third round pick for Drysdale. I'm sure uh, the Ducks will match whatever that is, but we might as well try. So yeah, 1.9 million one year. If he does say yes, again, I'm sure the Ducks match. Uh, in terms of the goalies, guys, you can see Brian Elliott, Yaroslav Alak, the two highest rated. But well, like I mentioned, I think Phil Kessel, keeping his Iron Man streak alive, would be fun to do that. So I'll make him an offer, 950k. On a one year, Pujarvi's 25, lowly potential. I wouldn't mind getting him on two. He wants 1.2 million. I'll do two years, 1.1. I mean, we have the salary cap space. I'd be willing to do two years, 1.1 on Pujarvi. Hopefully, he'll at least get to an 80. And check this out, guys. I was just looking at our coaching staff. We have an A head coach, so honestly, we might sim better than we should, just because we have such a good head coach. A lot of times in the sim, a good coach will actually take a bad team, make them competitive. I'll see you guys curious with the captaincy. It's actually, I think, true to real life. So no captain yet. Felino there, Murphy, and Jones all ranked A's. I think after this season, Felino will probably retire. If not, I don't really plan on bringing him back. But I do plan on giving Bedard the C. I think potentially making him the youngest captain in NHL history. So stay tuned for that. Wow, look at this, guys. Drysdale actually accepted that cheap offer. I'm doing the Ducks a favor, I feel. Although, if he grows a ton this season, they're going to have to pay him even more. So maybe not. Uh, Pugliarvi there accepted. Currently in the AHL. Um, Edler there, too. We'll call him up. Sam Phil Kessel. So a few nice free agent signings again. We'll let, you know, somebody else get Patty Kane. I think that's still pretty fair. You know, us getting those guys aren't too crazy. Donato currently over two points a game in the preseason. All right, guys, here's an update. Look at the lines after those free agent signings. No change to the top six. I feel like it looks solid. Third line, though, is now Phil Kessel, Ryan Donato, Jesse Pugliarvi. I feel like Pugliarvi with that low league potential. He needs to be getting NHL minutes to potentially actually hit that spike in growth. And then Kessel, of course, like I mentioned, I want to keep that Ironman streak alive. I think that'd just be fun. Uh, fourth line there is now Perry, Dickinson, Foligno. 
Uh, defensively here, we got Edler on that second pair with Zaitsev. And they're actually getting a plus two chemistry boost there, obviously being 79, a big upgrade there on Kaiser's only a 75. Uh, you guys can see the HLD there isn't terrible, terrible. In terms of the forwards, you got Kachuk, Kershaw I sent down, uh, same with Blackwell. I feel like, you know, maybe they'll help out the HL team do something. I don't really see them winning a Calder Cup, but you never know. Uh, Jackson Stauber here, 74 overall, medium starter. He's already 24 though, so probably not gonna train anything, but you never know. Also, to you guys, I should mention, regardless of the special teams, I honestly didn't even bother like switching it up because I don't really want to be good this year. So it doesn't really make sense for me to you know spend time trying to optimize the power play or whatever. And I'm actually hoping the team doesn't sim too well. And now speaking of the team here, guys, I should show you. And now speaking of the team, guys, I sh and speaking of the team, guys, I should show you the trade value for all of our different assets. Obviously, Connor Bedard number one, max value there. 84 high franchise. Right behind him though, Kevin Korchinski currently in juniors. Jones, Hall, Murphy, Reichel, uh, Frank Nazar, Oliver Moore. I obviously showed you guys earlier I added. Currently unsigned. I'll probably just leave them like that to let them just kind of play in, you know, whatever Euro League they're currently in. Obviously I had to do that just to make sure we could have their rights without actually having a contract signed. Draft pick wise, our first round picks probably gonna go up in rating even more. We have a Lightning first round pick. This of course coming from the Brandon Hagel trade. We've got three seconds there, a couple thirds, like we're in a pretty good spot here. And right now, guys, through six preseason games, Ryan and Huss actually are leading score with nine points. He's got seven goals, averaging over a goal per game. We're also 5 0 and 1, so we haven't even lost a game in regulation yet. Take a look at the ratings here to start the franchise series. So right there, you guys can see Connor Bedard is a Chicago Blackhawk, rocket number 98. We've got 87 offense, 86 defense, 80 goaltending. I'm excited to see what happens this year. Hopefully, Bedard can take home the Calder Trophy. And real quick, too, guys, before we start the same, if you wouldn't mind leaving a thumbs up on this video, it really helps me out. Also, too, guys, I always get questions about how I set up my scouts. No change from last year, so I make sure to have one in all the European countries, two in both Liga and SHL because there's just more players there. You can see Extra Liga, National League, Dell all get one. Uh, USA East, Central West get two, and then each CHL League also gets two. I make sure every single one of them is A+. Plus in their specific region. Our first trade off for guys of Angel 24, Kubalik, a fourth and a seventh for a second. We're a rebuilding team, actually more of a tanking team, so obviously saying no to that. All right, guys, so it's now the end of December here. We have a record of 13, 16, and six. We're currently second last in division. The Coyotes actually have one less point than us, so we gotta start tanking a little bit harder. Sharks and the Kings surprisingly below us. I don't know, I thought the Kings were pretty stacked, maybe just because they don't have the greatest goaltending. And the only team below us in the East there is the Flyers, which probably could have predicted. Our current leading scorer here is actually Seth Jones, 33 points, only has three goals. I was really hoping that would have been Bedard. Um, AHL wise, could chuck there about a point per game. AHL team, actually first place in their division, all right. Also to you guys, I just remembered I should do some contract extensions right now before guys start producing more. Taylor Radish, 82 overall, 2.5 for two years. That's pretty fair. Um, Honestly, we could potentially get him for like 2.6 for the next five, till he's 30. I feel like that'd be a fine contract. Now below him, Lucas Reichel, I'm actually more concerned about. Currently an 80, but obviously uh, gonna grow a lot more. Three million there for two years, four years, 3.6. I feel like, okay, gets up to about five million. Let's take him right till he's still an RFA, four years. That way we kind of have control. Loffer, I don't know, 3.3, hopefully he says yes. And again, even for like, you know, cap strapped, can at least get some picks back for him if we have his rights. Now, Ryder still accepted our offer, which is nice to see. Same with Reichel. All right, guys, we have the trade deadline now with a record of 24, 30, and 9. We're currently second last in the NHL. The only team below us in the standings is actually the Sharks with 47 points. They're doing pretty terrible. Real life, I think they're going to be a pretty bad team as well. Uh, Seth Jones, still leading scorer, AHL wise. It is Kershev now, 44 points. AHL team there, second in their division. So, we'll get to the trade deadline. Obviously, looking to trade away some guys. Honestly, Phil Kessel, I might keep because I want to make sure. You know, he keeps uh, that streak going as long as he can. Clearly, we're a full-on seller. Uh, we'll see kind of what's available here. Looking to add picks and prospects. Uh, we can trade away, say, Felino, Perry. Couture is on the block, which makes sense. Brodeen and Spurgeon. Minnesota, remember, they don't sim well. Always have those guys on the block. Uyghur, Lindholm, that's interesting. Jeremy Swayman. I mean, we don't really have a very good goalie prospect right now. Real life, they have Comiso, but I didn't have time to add everybody. So, uh, we could make a move for him, honestly, goalie of the future. Patty Kane signed the Flyers. Interesting. Apparently, they're not doing too well if he's on the block with Couturier. Zuccarello there, Hannafin, and Duclair. Okay, so I'm kind of interested in Swayman here. I mean, at that point, we're really starting to compete already next season, I guess, with a good goalie. But honestly, our best chance when it comes is probably year three when Bedard's grown a bunch and he's still on an entry-level deal. So this could make sense for us. And you know what, guys? I was just thinking, if we want to make this trade for Swayman, we should definitely wait till the summer. That way, our team can continue to tank for the rest of the season. Otherwise, Swayman might actually win us a few games, which could hurt us in terms of our first overall pick chances. So 
I'm gonna wait on this one, but definitely, you know, want to think about in the future. Now, I'm actually trying to make a dirty trade with Boston guys to get Fabian Lysel on the block. He usually is for them, but as you can see, 2177. He's a solid player. Like, he's got 48 points right now in the AHL, which is really good. Offering up Tyler Johnson, expiring deal. Give him a chance to play some playoff hockey there with the Bruins. Pretty equal value. I think it's actually a bit on their side, but Lysel's on the block. They want Johnson. I think they say yes. There we go. Trade's accepted. Solid move for us. I'll be shocked if this next trade goes through, guys. I'm trying to get Joel Hofer here from the St. Louis Blues. Obviously, he's a good young goalie. It doesn't really look like he's got enough value considering the fact he's got high starting potential. I mean, goalies obviously usually have less, but like that does not seem nearly enough. So uh, trying to flip the Mrazic here, who is higher rated, but obviously older. Retaining 50% of his contract for the rest of the season. Also, I need a fifth round pick there we got from Calgary. See what the Blues say. The value is on our side. Trades accepted. Okay, I don't think... Uh, high starter goalies have enough value. The reason I actually went after Hofer was because I've seen Gardenson's value there, which actually might be higher than Hofer's because he's younger. And now I'm curious about Dustin Wolf. Okay, Dustin Wolf with medium lead does actually have a decent amount, but uh, yeah, high starter, I feel that's like the goalies to trade for for sure. Next year, guys, we're trying to make a trade the Wild, offering up Donato for a fourth round pick. He signed for one more year at 2 million bucks, 27. I feel like he's easily replaceable in free agency. Might as well try and get a mid round pick for him. They say yes. Also, too, does help us play a little bit worse, I think, for the last month and a half. Trade him away. So I feel like those are probably all the trades going to make, guys. Nick Felino, Corey Perry, for instance, have like zero value, so can't really trade them. And then you got like Hall, Athens, CU. I'd actually like to keep for now. Reichel, of course, part of that future core. You guys can see here too, Bedard's now 88 overall. I was looking as well as our draft picks. I didn't realize. We had two first 2025, ours in Toronto's. We also have three seconds 2026. Like this team's future is set up there in terms of the picks. Prospect wise, we definitely use a few extra players. Uh, Buffalo there, I guess Ty Smith from the Penguins, kind of funny. I did lower his rating like 75 or something. Uh, our trade with Donato, let's see. Uh, Montreal there, got a first round pick for two thirds in Weidman. That is a steal by Montreal, even if it's a late first. John Beecher there, going to the LA Kings for David Riddick. Ryan Hartman there, goes to Nashville. Let's see, our trade for Hofer. Jake Wallman goes to the Leafs. Red Wings got a first round pick for him, not bad. Mark Johansson on the Vegas Golden Knights for Brisson and Korschak. Good work by Minnesota. Gosses Bear there goes to Edmonton for a first and a second. They also get Oli Mata, but still a pretty good uh, trade by Heisman. Felice and Holland. Let's see. Foodie there to Coyotes. Uh, Pittsburgh gets Sean Monahan. Montreal gets Lars Eller. Roslovich there to Boston for Jeremy Swayman. Interesting. Columbus gets their goalie of the future. Not a bad move. Tampa Bay gets Tyson Berry. For Nick Paul, a third and a sixth. That is a steal, I think. Patty Kane on the move to the Winnipeg Jets with Scott Lawton. And the Flyers get back a first, Kanaizev and Johansson. I mean, I don't know. The other team traded two thirds and a random for a first round pick. The Jets give up a first and two okay prospects for Patty Kane and Scott Lawton. That's nuts. Simeon Varlamov there got moved to LA Kings with Tristan Lennox for Arvidsson and Trevor Lewis. Some pretty big trades getting made. Mark andre Fleury to the Buffalo Sabres. Matt Dumba and Travis Dermott to the Devils with Ryan Zingle. Uh, Cowboys got back a first. Duclair there to the Preds. In exchange for Ryan McDonough, one for one. Interesting. So I guess Nashville wanted offense. Obviously the Sharks are not competing. So I'm not really sure why they made the trade. But they probably could use the defense, honestly. So after those moves at the trade deadline, guys. Here's an update look at the team. Bedard, as I mentioned, now 88 overall. He's also actually grown a couple X Factors. In my franchise mode features video, I mentioned how it's a thing now. As you can see, he actually gained Spinorama and Born Leader. So a couple I honestly didn't expect him to get. Spinorama was kind of cool, though. It's pretty unique. Born Leader as well, I think, goes with him getting the C at the start of next season. It's like they almost knew. I also just realized I forgot to bump up his face-off stat. I feel like he should have at least an 80. He's actually been doing pretty well for a rookie in the face-off circle. Um, behind them, Kessel, Reichel, Radish isn't that bad. Even the bomb six, I think, is decent. Defensively, actually, there is no change. Of course, goalie, um, Hofer there backing up Soderblom. And then the AHL, I think the only change is Lysel on that first line. So hopefully AHL team uh, continues to do well, even though we did, you know, call it Blackwell. And obviously, more importantly, hopefully the AHL team can start to lose some more games. And now this is great, guys. After the trade deadline, the team has started to start playing better. We're actually 500 now with one game left. Let's see. We finish below or above. We finish below 500. 81 points there. So... If we would have actually lost a bunch of games, would have had a better shot at picking, you know, top five. I don't know why the team actually started to play better after we trade away, guys. AHL team here, 41-21-7, first place in the division. That is good to see. Hopefully they can make a run here at the Calder Cup. Uh, Kachuk there, 59-69, not bad at all. In the NHL, Seth Jones actually finished our leading scorer with 68 points. Curious to see 
What kind of numbers Bedard put up? So he had 66. I feel like that's pretty solid. I'm pretty sure his over under this year is literally like 65. So he's been pretty close to real life. 274 shots. He was just taking shots from everywhere. Taylor Radish had a 50 point season with 54. Anthony C, exact same number. Lucas Reichel also 50 point season. Same with Kessel and Hall. So I mean, the fact we had seven guys on this team put up 50 plus points is actually a pretty promising sign. Nick Foligno there at 30. Same with Perry. Obviously, probably not going to bring them back, but that's actually not even that bad production from a fourth line player. Goaltending here, Soderblom, 40 games played, 916, 285, with four shutouts. He might be the reason why we didn't finish looking the standing. Now, AHL team here, Stauber, six shutouts, a 9 1, 2 6 2. Kachuk there at 59. Same with Lysa, we did get to play an extra four games due to the trade that happened. And now, taking a look at the entire league here, guys, Johnny Goudreau put up 110 points, Matthews 109, Shifley 106, McDavid 104, Marner 101, Cal Connor was also at 100, Panarin, Patty Kane at 95. Even as an 86, it's still an absolute god in the sim. No zone ability either. I've also like decreased all of his stats. That is crazy to see. Ovechkin there, 94. Looks like Matthews though. Actually, no McDavid. Sorry, taking on Marisha Shard. And in terms of defensive scoring here, guys, Josh Morrissey actually finishing first. McAvoy there, Carlson. Most of these names all make sense. And in terms of goaltenders, Ilya Samsonov had the most wins, 43. And now best save percentage for a starter goes to Bobrovsky in 916. Goals against here. Yorgiev, 265. Probably one of those two guys wins the Vesna. In terms of rookie skaters, come on, Bedard. Carlson, 67. I mean, Bedard had a plus four. If it's like last year, they really care about that plus minus. Bedard, one less point with a plus five better differential. I think he'll take on the Calder, but that's very close. Leo Carlson, are you kidding me? 80 overall, he popped off of the Ducks. Logan Cooley there, 56 with the Coyotes. Fantilli was also 50 plus. After that, no one really did anything. And so now in terms of the entire league, guys, the Maple Leafs there on the President's Trophy, the 107 points. You had seven teams with 100 plus. Uh, I'm trying to think of big surprises. Washington in eighth, kind of crazy. The Ducks in 13th, like that is really Arizona 14th. Are you kidding me? Both of those teams making the playoffs. That's nuts. Vegas squeaks in at 18. Um, all these teams that missed, none of them might say are playoff locks. Probably the biggest ones, the LA Kings. How did they do that bad? 78 points. Like, we actually finished 24th in the league there, 81. You can see, guys, like, if we just lost two more games, we're literally tied for, like, a bottom five team with the Flyers. That's just terrible to see, but you never know. Maybe we'll get lucky with the draft lottery. I really doubt it, though. But first here, guys, we actually have to sim through the AHL playoffs. Fabian Lysel is our leading scorer now. They actually had a couple games left, so we'll see how this goes. Obviously, AHL, I'm not, you know, too concerned with if they win or lose, but a color Cup in our first year would be a nice little feather in our cap. We'll see what happens here. Win the first game and the second. Come on. There we go. So you beat uh, Milwaukee there in three. They actually have it as a five-game series now in round one because I think uh, that was an issue last year. We got the Grand for Griffins round two. It's also a five-game series. I think that's true to real life. Unfortunately, we actually lose all three games of the Griffins. But still, round two of the AHL playoffs. I'll take that in the first season. And this is kind of crazy, guys. After losing both Bergeron and Krejci to retirement, the Boston Bruins win the Stanley Cup. Are you kidding me? They lost Tyler Bertuzzi and Taylor Hall as well. That's crazy. I mean, I feel bad for Taylor Hall getting traded from the Stanley Cup winning team to us. Are you kidding me as well? Nashville jumps from 10 to 1. Are you kidding me? We were 9. If we actually like were slightly better, we would have got first overall. That just hurts even more. Philly there actually jumps from 3 to 2, so the Sharks are picking at 3. Nashville gets Mack and Solibrini. And Philly there is actually picking at 2 and 6 via the Florida pick. I think they got that from the Claude Giroux trade. Luckily at 10, we should still be getting a meal-neat player, but... Obviously, I'd prefer to have a top five pick. And so look at the playoff tree here, guys. The Boston Bruins beat the Lightning in six, Hurricanes in five, Penguins in five, and then the Oilers there in five. That's actually kind of funny. I, I predicted Oilers versus Bruins in the Stanley Cup final last year. So to see it happen first year in the Sim, I mean, not terrible, I guess. Um, team awards there. I think we know all of those. Individual, Johnny Goudreau, Art Ross. Shifley, though, gets the Hearts. Josh Morrissey, James Norris. Patty Kane, Lady Bang with the Jets. There we go. Connor Bedard did win the Calder. Uh, Brad Marchand, Con Smythe. I'm sure he had to pop off of that team. Yorgi got the Vesna, also got the Liam Jennings, uh, Savard, Bill Masterton, Ducks coach Jack Adams, Crosby got the Selkie, interesting, Shifley, Ted Lindsay, and then McDavid there, Misha Shard, back to back years. Now, in the HL guys, the Bakersfield Condors won the Calder Cup. We did win something, though. We won our division, as you can see there. So, again, that's something uh, for us. Adam got debt there, most points in the league, also MVP. McCarran, most goals. Bulldog, best rookie. Poirier, best defenseman. Silao's best goalie. Ernie, MVP of the playoffs. Stahl actually signed with Seattle, was playing their AHL team. He got sportsmanship. Kevin Ballack being involvement, and then Aaron Dell there was the best goalie. And now next year, we got to take a look at retired players. Probably no one crazy. Yeah, Eric Stahl, 
Simmons was in free agency for Leak and Nisimov, Jack Johnson, Bell Mayer, really not too much. And so we'll get to the draft now, guys. We'll see if they fix the issue where if a team like Nashville jumps from 10 to 1, they always have their pick on the block. Hopefully it's fixed. And it is fixed. Okay, their pick's not on the block. That is good to see. So take a look at the draft class here. It should be like pretty authentic to what you know people are predicting right now. So Celebrini 1, Eisman 2, Demidov 3, Levshinov 4, you got Kat in there at 5. Uh, Siliev 6, Kilhardu at 7, Dickinson 8, Helenus 9, Muse 10. I mean, I feel like that's pretty good. Adams there, I believe, is made up. Tanner Howes at 11, Perek there, Emil Hemming, Masse, Liam Greentree. I feel like Christoforo, Senek. This is like a pretty authentic draft class. I'm actually pretty happy with how they turned out. So, right now, we'd be getting Henry Muse. Honestly, I think we need forwards and defense. We're just taking best player available. If we could move up a little bit, I think that'd be cool. Like, Celia here's a 6-7 defenseman. He'd be fun to have on the team. Or Levshinov, just like an absolute beast. And I just realized, guys, Flyers are going to be walking away from this draft with, like, potentially Cole Eiserman and Levshinov. Like, that's insane. And now in terms of gems here, guys, I got Justin Poirier going early second round. I know he's medium top six, so it doesn't really help us too much. Uh, potential wise and looks to be getting guaranteed medium leads going late and now next year guys I'm trying to move up in the draft two spots from 10 to 8 with the Islanders their picks on the block They've also got Maggio on the block here, too uh, If you guys don't know he was captain of the Windsor Spitfires last year Which is my favorite OHL team. I've actually got season tickets with thrash So if we could get him would be pretty sweet. Um, I mean two third round picks here I feel like the one third is probably more than enough to move up the two spots So we add the second third there to sweeten the deal to get Maggio They got the pick and Maggio on the block. We'll see if they say yes to this trade Trades rejected. Okay, quite far off Honestly, we have so many second round picks. Could throw in like our worst one, but then our worst third. I feel like this would still be a good trade for us. Trades rejected. Now they said we're only a bit far off, so I'm thinking throwing like a seventh round pick 2025 as well. And there we go. Okay, so we move up in the draft and we get a solid prospect. As you guys can see, Celebrini there went first overall, 80 high elite. Irishman number two, 78 medium elite. I'm just kind of curious there. Eiserman actually grew a bunch of X-Factors during the draft because I think it only gave him make it snappy and puck on a string. As you guys can see, you got a few others. Celebrini here. I'm pretty sure I gave All Alone and Ankle Breaker 2. I guess we didn't scout him so we can't see it. But at this point, guys, I'm honestly pretty happy with whoever we get at 8. So I'm just going to sim to our pick. Kibble Harder just got taken one before us. That's unlucky. Uh, Siliev there at 6. So Flyers get him and Eiserman. Not bad. Uh, Levshinov actually went 3. Above Berkeley Catton at four and Demidov at five. Demidov would have been kind of nasty, but honestly, with Bedard, I think I'd rather have a playmaker. Now, at this spot, we're looking at a defenseman, probably, I guess, Helenus is an option. Um, of getting Malkin similar style, interesting. NHL ETA there, two years. It's either him and Dickinson or Henry Muse. All three of these guys are immediately potential. I'm not really sure which way do we go here, guys. Now, I did just say I wanted a playmaker for Bedard. Helenus is a playmaker. I feel like we got to go with him. I don't think I ever took him last year, so trying something new. As you can see, Senyo overall, me elite out of the draft. Any X factors? None yet, but obviously you can grow some. And now next year, guys, I'm actually trying to move up six spots at the end of the first round to Vegas Golden Knights, offering up one of three fourth round picks we have in 2025. Vegas said no. Wow, I thought that was like a very fair offer. Um, honestly, like, this draft didn't have a ton of depth in it after the first few rounds, so could just give him a third this year. Vegas says yes. Okay, so that was a good deal. I'll show you guys why. There's somebody I was eyeing. Hopefully, we can get them. Uh, so, Masse was just taken. I was actually looking at taking Winter Spitfire, who is available. Anthony Cristoforo here. So, we're getting a couple Spitfires in Maggio and him, which is kind of cool. And as you can see there, 65 medium top four. Also, two guys after Helenus got picking, you can see Dickinson there at 9, 71 medium lead. I didn't know he's one overall higher, but still with Helenus there. Muse at 10. This Adams guy I was right, was made up. 77 medium lead defenseman, 6'5. Could have taken him, but honestly, it's fine. And now I'm saving to pick 36 here, guys. There's a chance. I was gonna say Justin Poirier is available. Unfortunately, he was just taken two picks early. That'd have been such a good first three picks in this draft. At this point, I'm not even sure. Actually, Yakumachuk, I believe, is medium top four. So we want to just take him, um, add another solid defensive prospect. I feel like that makes sense, especially um, early second round. That's good value. Yeah, 63 medium top four. Not bad at all. And now next year, guys, I'm trading back 30 spots with the Vegas School Knight, trying to pick up a sixth round pick. Really just know what I want at this spot, so might as well try and acquire some asset. Vegas there says yes. Hopefully that's six. We can just take a you know wild shot and hit on somebody. Now, uh, pick 73 here, who I was looking at, actually, is this American goalie. There's a chance he's medium elite. And actually, guys, look at this. Vinny's available. He's actually the number one ranked player right now. 
Maybe it was meant to be. I don't even know what his potential is. I totally forgot to like check his out. We're gonna find out here. And medium fringe starter. Oh my god. I gotta go upgrade that. That's a joke. So next year, guys, I'm offering the Vegas Golden Knights a third round pick next year for their third this year, plus a seventh. Basically to try and get that American goalie. Honestly, I would just do it one for one. There we go. I'm really thinking that this goalie I was eyeing is gonna be medium elite. I could be wrong. It could end up not being worth it, but I've just got a feeling. So it's Eddie there. Hopefully, he's at least like a medium starter. And he is medium elite. Let's go. I had a feeling. Only 49 overall, but still, we take that in the third round. That's a steal. Also, too, guys, regards to the first round, not sure if I showed you guys the rest of it. After Adams there, you got Parekh, Howe, Greentree, Hemming, Masik, Christoforo, Sinek, Gormley, Chromiak, Korolev, Caswell, Richie, Brantseg, Nygaard, Jerichek, Oli, Perry, Semenov, Misa, Baikov, Vasanin, and Hennessy, which I feel like at this point is a pretty accurate first round draft. Now in the sixth round, guys, we're just taking a chance on a couple guys. I'm going to go with Yuri Zykov here. Could be medium lead as well. Medium bottom six. I mean, sometimes you hit, sometimes you don't. Uh, last pick here, we're going to take a chance on that other guy who could be medium elite. And that's uh, Vorobayev. Come on. And medium bottom six as well. I mean, honestly, I'm still pretty happy with this draft. The fact that we got a medium lead forward, two medium top four defensemen, and then a medium lead goalie, like, cannot complain. All right, guys, we're at the resign phase here. It's $42.5 million in cap space. That's unreal. Seth Jones is now a 90. He's also gained a few X factors. Very cool to see. Athens is an 86. Uh, Taylor Radish is 85. San Lucas Reichel. Glad to see we got both those guys. Very good contracts. Phil Kessel now an 83. I'd love to bring him back. I just think it's, you know, a fun player to sign. Four million he wants now for two years. That's a lot. Luckily for Phil, we have so much cap space to spend. I'll sign him for four million for one year. Have him play like third line right wing. Corey Perry, Sarah Felina, they gotta be the right price. 1.5 is not honestly terrible. Could have him as a, just a good fourth liner for that price. Zaitsev here, 80 overall, I can probably let go. Felino's lower rated than Perry, but he wants more money. And I'm guessing it's just because he's a little bit younger. Um, I mean, they're both solid fourth liners. I'd offer him one and a half for one. Dickinson can let go at this point as well. Same with Edler. Pulyarvi here, his potential is dropped from low lead to low top nine. He could still be like an okay bottom player. Uh, I'm just gonna qualify him. As you guys can see, you can actually see the amount that you qualify for now, which is really nice. So like Kachuk here, for instance, only 850K. Alex Vlasic, 23, 77, high top six. We could get him signed three years for a million bucks. That could be a steal. Now Frank Nazar here needs signed, obviously, former first round pick. We'll get him locked up. He's a 76 now. Oliver Morris still has one year left. Also too, guys, we gotta make sure we get this guy signed. Marcel Marcel, one of the best names in hockey. Uh, we'll get him three years there, league men. He can eventually become a player for us. That'd be so awesome. Now, in terms of the goalies, guys, we still have Sodom and Hofer under contract. We're just trying to tank for Misa. I feel like that's definitely good enough. Uh, Stauber there. He was decent last year. Why not bring him back? Be the AHL starter. And then Vinny here, honestly, at this point, is already probably good enough to be the AHL backup. All right, guys. So, Corey Perry's coming back to the team, which is good to see. Same with Nick Foligno with the two vets. Much cheaper. Roos there could probably be a bomb pairing guy. Uh, Phillips there. Vlasic. Both those guys should be in the AHL. Stauber wants more money. Kessel said yes as well. Same with Marcel, Marcel. So I'm just going to qualify Stauber for now. And I feel like at that point, we're actually pretty good. And as you guys can see, we got $36 million in cap space. Now, having said that, we kind of need at least two, if not four, NHL defensemen. Forward, we're not looking as bad, but still have to sign a few guys. And there we go, guys. The day before free agency, Stauber accepted the qualifying offers. So I'm very curious to see who's available because, as I mentioned, we got so much money to spend. Obviously, you have to spend it wisely, though. Patrick Kane could bring back. Again, I'm just not sure if it's realistic for him to come back to Chicago, so I'm not going to bother signing him, who is actually back up to an 89, which is where EA had him, so that's kind of funny. Philip Peronic here wants $7 million RFA with the Canucks. I'm guessing they just can't afford him. Now, Gusto Forsling here is actually a pretty solid defenseman, not too old. He's 28. He might be a guy that makes sense to get. He's an offensive defenseman here. I feel like he could actually play pretty well top pair of Seth Jones. Then we just got to get somebody to play with Murphy on the second, so... I feel like we got the money, three year deal till he's 31, let's do four till he's 32. Price actually comes down quite a bit, let's try 6 million bucks or four years for him. JJ Moser here is available, 83 overall, but he's also an RFA. Honestly, I'm thinking Tyson Perry, let's just get some guys, are you kidding me? Was he scratched last year? Oh no, 18 games at Tampa Bay. Um, Actually, wait a minute, yeah, so Nashville didn't even play him, what the heck? That's interesting to see. I feel like if we bring him in, put him on a top power play, he'll definitely put up some points, play with Bedard, then we can just flip him or something. Uh, two other teams interested. He wants three years, so he's 35. Um, 
I'm thinking just put up, I mean, we could still trade him if he's under contract. $6 million for three years. If he jumps a bunch in rating, definitely sell high on him. Also, Matthew Shane's available here, guys. He's always one of my favorite players. Last year, he had 56 points with the Stars. He's actually gained the wheels X Factor there. Pretty cheap price, 4.5 for 84. Make him a one-year deal, maybe playing with Taylor Hall. Potentially on the first line, Bedard. Stevie says yes to a two-year 475. Now this is a weird one, guys. Tarasenko dropped in rating from 86 to 84 after putting up 63 points. I do not understand that. Now take a look at goalies here, guys, as well. Out of curiosity, Samson is the number one, 86 overall. Flurry is available too. Again, I don't really see us competing for a cup this year, so might as well try and get another high draft pick before going for it in Bedard's final year on his ELC. And now in terms of potential here, nothing too crazy like Andu in there, 2478. Rodriguez, this Quap guy, 21, 61, medium starter. Honestly, he might be worth signing. I think we have the goalie spot, so might as well, yeah. Also, Max Domi here, guys. I know he enjoyed his time in Chicago. Maybe we could bring him back. He only wants one year, or actually, sorry, he wants three years, three million. Oh, man, I really don't like these three-year deals. I would do probably a one year, because we got Nazar coming up. We got more coming up. I would offer more money, though, because we have so much right now. I'd do four million for one year. I feel like he'd say yes. And look at this, guys. I'm checking two-way skaters. Jack Dre's available. 24-78, medium top nine. Great face-offs. I don't know why Kellen didn't sign him. If we can get him under contract, two years, under a million. Even if he's just in the AHL, eventually, I think he'd be in our bottom six. We'll check potentials, too, because obviously, let like, go of a bunch of AHL players that just weren't cutting it. Yan Jenik here, 23-77 is not too bad. If we can get him for three years, under a million as well. Same goes for Raphael Lavoie, who's on the Oilers. Not sure why. I mean... Obviously, these guys aren't amazing players. They're guys you could definitely see, you know, going through waivers. But I'm sure there's worse players they are signing. Eskikov here has some nasty hands, so I'll sign him for that reason. All right, guys, so like goalie Quap accepted our offer. Again, he'll just be like third string AHL, but has decent potential. And Matthew Shane said yes, that's big. Uh, Tyson Berry appreciates the interest. He went to the Montreal Canadiens. Honestly, they could use a player like him. Their defense is pretty rough. Uh, Max Domi coming back to Chicago. Jenik there went to the Pittsburgh Penguins. So kind of cool to see, like, not everyone made offers on saying yes. Jack Drury, though, did. Forcing with the Ducks. I thought I made both him and Barry pretty fair offers, but maybe it's because we're not a great team. Lavoie said yes. It's Kakov as well. Now we still have $29 million in cap space. I think the cap floor minimum is like $20 million below the max. So uh, we got to spend $9 million still. Could go and get Blake Wheeler. I don't know if that makes sense though. Uh, Giordano could add a veteran to this team, 40 years old. Kind of like Felino Perry, same idea. We need defensemen, like we need bodies. One year, I'll give him $5 million bucks. Come in. Play for us. Maybe we try with the deadline, 50%. Also, gonna make an offer on Schultz here, guys. As I mentioned, we need somebody to like quarterback that second power play. Seth Jones can do the first one. I'm assuming too, like Korchinski won't be high enough rated. Uh, one year, five million bucks. Hopefully, that gets it done. Could still sign a couple more defensemen as well. Uh, otherwise, we think we'd have like two 77s. I feel like Shinekirk and Ian Cole for their price are pretty good options, both 82s. Again, if we're playing well, then like cool. But if not. Uh, should be pretty easy to trade these guys. We're going to offer them each 2.5. And only for one year, of course. Montreal just offered us Matheson in a third for two seconds. Definitely not going to give up picks for him, that's for sure. LA here offering us Gavrikov in a fourth for two seconds. Everybody knows we need defense, but there's still some guys available for agency. And we just signed one, Kevin Shankirk, Giordano, that's even bigger, Ian Cole, and Justin Schultz. Okay, so we actually have six NHL defensemen now, which is nice to see. This is kind of funny, guys. The Flyers are trying to dump $11 million on us for two second round picks and Pesci and Ristolainen. Pesci's actually worth the six and a half. Ristolainen, though, definitely isn't. And so we're now to start next season, guys. Usually I skip over this screen, but immediately I'm setting our captains. That way I can have the youngest captain ever in Conor Bedard. They've got Nick Foligno wearing the C. Yeah, nope. Conor Bedard, youngest captain in NHL history. Let's go. As you guys can see, the first line, we've got Taylor Hall, Conor Bedard, Lucas Reichel. I feel like that's pretty solid. Second line, Radish, Duchesne, Athens, to see you. Duchesne kind of screwed us. He was an 84, dropped by two during the summer. Uh, Kessel on the third line is an 83 now. Play with Domi, Pliarvi, Perry, Jury, Felino on the fourth line is actually pretty capable. In terms of the defense, it looks totally different now. I signed a bunch of guys. So we got Giordano, Jones, Murphy, Schultz, Cole, Shankirk. Obviously, Murphy, Jones, the other guys we kept. The rest... All signed in for agency last summer. In terms of the goaltending here, we got Hofer starting with Soderblom backing him up. So I think that's okay goaltending. Again, we're not really trying to do good necessarily. So uh, if our goalies aren't that great, it's okay. First power play there, you can see. But Dart, of course, going to be the finisher. Going to try and have him put up 100 points maybe this year. He's 90 overall already at 19 years old. Kind of crazy. He's also the youngest captain in NHL history, as I'll show you guys the cap see a little bit later. No chemistry boost on that one. We actually get a minus on the power play too. So the coaching here isn't looking the best. I uh, might have to hire some new coaches, at least, you know, assistant coaches 
associate coaches, things like that after this season. PK wise, it's a little bit better. We have some pretty good 2A players there in the bottom six. So that checks out. And in terms of the HL team, they actually won their division last year. I feel like this season, they should be pretty good too. First line there, Lysol, Kershev, and Edwistle isn't bad at all. Second line is like a Young Gun line, Maggio, Nazar, and Hayes. Third line, I could chuck. It's Kakov and Lavoie, also solid. Fourth line here, Stenborg, Lewinsky, and Doc isn't bad either. I actually noticed Lewinsky here has low top nine potential, which is pretty insane for a early second round pick 2022. Obviously, he's a guy I missed when I was trying to, you know, quickly fix the roster so I could actually get started this franchise. Have to fix him in the future. Uh, defensively here, Vlasic, Sunny Nine. I think he'll definitely be at least a bomb pairing guy. 6'6", defensive defenseman, should fit there well. Korczynski, you can definitely see him growing a ton this summer. Make the NHL next year as well, which is why it's a good thing we have a lot of one-year deals on our NHL defensemen. If we're not doing good as well, we can trade out the deadline. Uh, Phillips, Roos, Allen, Kaiser. In terms of the goaltending, we got Stauber starting and Coiffe, who just signed back in a month. So overall, I feel like we're going to be the NHL team's getting better. The HL team is looking pretty nice. Again, guys, Bedard there in the C, youngest captain in NHL history. Very excited for that. You know, we'll see how he does this first year as the captain of this team. Can he lead us? out of the basement. Obviously, we're gonna have to wait and see. Now, before we do get started with the sim here, guys, I'll show you the ratings for this season. We've got 92 offense, 91 defense, and 82 goal tank, which honestly isn't that bad. Let's see how they do. Wow, look at the trade off we just got from the Florida Panthers. Sergey Bobrovsky for a second round pick, a fourth round pick, and Ludwinski, who we were just talking about. Obviously, we have the cap space, but really no reason to bring in Bob at 10 million, especially if it's gonna make our team better. Have to say no. And now we just got off here, guys, the Philadelphia Flyers, a third round pick for Kevin Shankirk. If we're not a playoff spot by the deadline, I'll definitely look to trade him for at least that, hopefully a second. All right, guys, we're at the end of December now with a record of 17, 14, and 4, which isn't too bad. Uh, we're currently sitting outside of a playoff spot, but only by two points, kind of where I expected us to be, just on the outside looking in. Kind of the worst spot as well. You don't have a high pick, nor are you in the playoff picture. Uh, Bedard, though, currently averaging over a point per game. I love that. AHL team. Currently in a playoff spot. Maggio there, almost a point per game. Awesome to see that as well. This one's interesting, guys. Coyote's offering us Mamelka, Kerfoot, and a third for a second and a fourth. So it seems like the AI GMs think we're going for a playoff run. I don't really think that's the case. AHL team definitely is, though. First line division. NHL team, let's see. I'm going to take it back. We're 32, 26, and 4. We're in the wild card race. We currently have a spot. We got a two point lead there on the Predators, who are the next closest. Wow. Uh, this makes the trade deadline very hard because you obviously don't want to buy and then miss. Nor do you want to sell and like not have a chance at Stanley Cup. Probably going to be a quiet trade deadline from us. Uh, Bedard there, still over a point per game, which is awesome. AHL team, Kershaw now lean score, almost a point per game. So I think at this point, really, we're just looking for like a hockey trade, one that makes sense now and in the future. I would say, I guess, conservative buyer, which is kind of crazy. I thought we'd probably be a conservative seller, if anything, at this deadline. But take a look at the trade block, see who is available. Sidney Crosby, one year left at 8.7 million, of course. Shea Theodore there also one year left on his deal. Bucinavich, Montour, Anderson, Uyghur, Brodeen, Toffoli, Petrangelo, Spurgeon. Wow, Vegas and Minnesota both have their top two defensemen on the block. Probably not going to trade for either of them. But we'll look around the league, see what else is out there. And check this out, guys. We're just going through the teams. Leo Carlson's now got medium franchise potential. And Mason McTowish has low franchise. You don't really see that. So very, very cool. Carlson's trade value, of course, is now at the max. I wonder, Fantilli, he's still high elite. And look at this, guys. Vegas literally has all their players on the block. Mark Stone, Stevenson, Marchessault, so Carlson, Barbashev. Like, they're just completely rebuilding, I guess. Which honestly probably fits Vegas. If they weren't doing well, they would just put everyone on the block and see what trades came in. Vegas just offered us Logan Thompson, a fourth round pick for a second. That's actually a pretty fair offer. We drop back two rounds, pick up an 84 overall goalie who's actually not playing very well. We got Hofer's 83. Never mind, take it back. Not as good an offer as I thought. And this is a surprise too, guys. Ottawa has Shabbat, Chikrin, and Giroux all on the block. Again, we're in like such a weird spot. It doesn't make sense to make a big time trade for one of these guys. We're really just looking for kind of players like Othman, honestly. 22, 77, medium top six. Maybe I'll make a move on him. So like I mentioned, guys, we're gonna try and get Brendan Othman here from New York Rangers. Again, solid prospects on the Canadian World Junior team. I think played with Bedard, maybe not the same line, but definitely, you know, he's on the ice with him a little bit. 22 years old there, 77 overall, medium top six. I think he'd be a great addition to the team. Now, I'm offering up Dallas second round pick this year. Also asking for Minnesota's fifth. So we actually are getting a pick back. They're probably gonna say no, but I would be willing to, you know, do this straight up or even try and get a seventh back. Trade rejected, I kind of figured. But I do think, because the value's on our side, we can get at least a seventh round pick back with Othman. And there we go, okay. So the chance of us getting a player as good as Othman in the second round was very, very slim. So I like that move for us. Again, we're kind of teaming the team together just because if they somehow squeak into the playoffs, maybe they go on a Cinderella run. 
Uh, but other than that, I didn't really see too much that makes sense for us right now. All right, guys, so the trade deadline is now complete. As I mentioned, I expected it to be pretty quiet just with where we were in the standings. Um, tons of picks being moved. Our trade for Othman, lots more picks. Bray McNabb there to Tampa. Let's see, anything else going on? You got Fabry of the Kraken, Dvorak to the Predators, um, Zub there to the Penguins, Adrian Campe to the Penguins. That's actually a pretty big trade. And all the Kings got back was a couple seconds. He must be a penny in UFA. Uh, Peterson there to the Panthers, Rodriguez goes back to the Penguins, Gavrikov to the Flyers is pretty big, Erickson X to the Blues, it's a big time trade, Minnesota only got a couple seconds as well, again he must be a penny in UFA, um, Buffalo got Pavel Buchnevich, that's massive, in exchange for Zach Benson and Samuelson and Ratzlaff, wow, they get a medium lead forward, medium top four defenseman, medium starter goalie, St. Louis actually got a pretty good haul I think for him, but obviously trade a first line forward, Scott Mayfield there to the Stars, Christian Kyrie to the Flames, uh, Crosby to the Flyers, <laughs> there is no way ever that Crosby is going to the Philadelphia Flyers, that is hilarious, that's probably like his most hated team I guess, even more than like the Capitals, uh, Sharangovich there to the Islanders, uh, Liam Greenstreet there also goes to the Flames in exchange for Noah Hannafin, pretty big trade, a couple more picks being moved, Carson Johnson to the Ottawa Senators, they get a good young goalie, Definitely an active trade deadline. And right here, you guys can actually see the Crosby trade. I don't think I looked at it before. Celia, of course, is a mean league defenseman. Just went top 10 in the 2024 draft. Second round pick and Luke Misa. Philadelphia gave up a lot there. Now, they did have two first round picks. Um, their other one, of course, was Cole Eiserman, But uh, pretty crazy to see. The Bushnavich trade as well was just massive. And so that trade, guys, so look at the AHL teams. Obviously, NHL team wasn't touched. I've actually got Offman playing on the second line now with Nazar and Maggio, as I mentioned. That was our young gun line. So Hazer got dropped to the third line. And actually, speaking of the lines, though, guys, there is one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of the episode. I don't think I'm ever going to break up Taylor Hall and Connor Bedard, as I don't know if you guys saw the goal highlight from last night, but the celebration here after Taylor Hall scores with Bedard skating back into him, I thought it was so funny. Like, I don't know what's going on between those two guys, but they seem to really like each other. So cannot break them up for the rest of this franchise. We're holding on to Hall until he retires. This is hilarious, guys. Literally a day after trading away Sidney Crosby, the Pittsburgh Penguins then fire their head coach. So the Pittsburgh Penguins are completely rebuilding, I guess. Kyle Dubas is tearing it down after one year with Crosby, Malkin, and Carlson. That's insane. The Devils also fire their head coach. I feel like the Devils are in such a good spot right now. For them to be firing their head coach a year from like today in real life would be crazy. All right, guys. We're not in the season here with a record of 43, 32, and 7, which honestly surprised me a ton. I did not think a team was going to play this well. And we're super streaky too. Like after the deadline, we actually won seven straight games. We then followed that up by losing five straight games. We followed that up with three wins. And then we lost five four straight before winning the last game of the year. Super streaky team. I mean, if we're on a hot streak in the playoffs, obviously that'll work for us. Um, in terms of the standings, we made the playoffs. 93 points there, gave us third place in the Central. We're gonna be playing the Avalanche though in the first round with 104. So a uh, pretty good chance we'll be getting a 4-0 uh, sweep here in the first round, but you never know, maybe the team will surprise us. Connor Bedard, 89 points, not bad at all for the sophomore season. HL wise, Kershev, almost point per game. AHL team though finished first place in the league. So. I could definitely not be upset with that. And now look at the rest of the team here, guys. You had Hall putting up 76 points. Solid year from him, especially at 33 years old. Lucas Reichel at 65. Jones, 62. Uh, Kessel, 57 at 37 years old. Can we get him that fourth Stanley Cup? Uh, Domi, Duchesne, Athens, Seal, all at 50 plus. Cannot complain. Radish was very, very close to 46. So, yeah, overall, the team wildly exceeded my expectations. Goaltending here, Hofer below a 900, just barely. 337 goals again. Starbull on much better numbers there. 913285. Decent amount of games too at 28. Um, AHL team, Stauber, also below 900. Co-op there, a bit better numbers. Seems to always be the backup, plays better for whatever reason. Um, after Kershaw, you had Lysel, 59. Othman, 58. Maggio, 50. Everyone else there under. Nazar, though, was pretty close with 47. And now look at the entire league here, guys. You love to see that. McDavid back on top, 120 points. Leading the league just like he does in real life. Matthews at 2, 61 goals. You had Dry Settle 3 with 115. It's a Banajad career year. Adam Fox, 113 points of defenseman. He's basically pulling an Eric Carlson, but he plays defense. Uh, McKinnon, Ranton, Connor, Benarin, huge year for scoring. Like, wow. Look at all those guys at 100 plus. Pashnak actually at 99. Uh, in terms of goals, yeah, Matthews was first, followed by Ranton and Ovi. Now, defensive scoring here, obviously, Fox is first, 113. Uh, you got Makar behind him, Carlson. 73, still with the Penguins, and he's got a minus 27, so he leaves the Sharks for the good team, and again, pretty much uh, same as usual, he's putting up points, but his team sucks, uh, Vasilevsky there, most wins in the league, 46, save percentage here for a starter, is going to be Carter Hart with a 9-2-2, and the best goals against for a starter is also Carter Hart, so are the Philadelphia Flyers back already, Carter Hart potentially winning the Vesna Trophy there, next we'll take a look at the rookie skaters, 
Marco Casper. I mean, I love that. 82 points, point per game player this season. 87 overall already. If he turns into that, to be insane. He actually beat out Michkov for the Calder. Celebrini even. Only 46 points of the Preds. They're playing him quite a bit too, but I guess, you know, he is only 80 overall. You'd think though if he was playing with like Philip Forsberg, somebody else decent, he would have done better than that. And actually behind the top three, everyone else was just in the 30s or lower. And now in terms of the entire league here, guys, you got the Tampa Bay Lightning and the President's Trophy 116. I do see there are some teams that still have a game left to be played, but it doesn't really look like it's going to affect the, the major stuff. And we actually finished 14th in the entire NHL, tied with Vancouver for 13th. So how we were a top third team in the league with the roster we had, I have no idea, but we'll take it. I mean, obviously... Hopefully it's a sign of good things to come. Ottawa there last, Pittsburgh second last. All right, guys, so the Avs first line there. Healthy Landis Collard playing with McKinnon, Rantanen, Nachushkin, Johansson, Lekkinen, Jatar, Colton O'Connor, Olison, Protis, Wood. That's a solid forward group. Defensively, Taze McCard has to be the best deep pair in the league. Manson, Byron's down 88. Gerard, Prunovic, goaltending. Yorgi's still starting down 87. Ranta backing him up. I mean, yeah, this team is stacked. Um, we gotta work that out for us. I don't see us winning the series, but if we could win a game, I feel like that'd be, you know, accomplishing something. Game Bedard, his first playoff win under his belt. First two games here in Denver, Colorado. And we lose the first one OT. Win the second 8-2, to two. are you kidding me? The fact that we play them that tight in the first, and then come back with a huge win, crazy. Henry Chicago now for game 3 and 4. 4-2 loss, that's alright. Game 4, 3-0 win. We shut him out, tie up the series. This is crazy. Game 5 away. And 6-5 OT loss. I mean, we're right there with Colorado. Like, we've lost one game by more than a goal. Game 6, we have to win. And we do not. We lose 2 nothing. But, again, we never got blown out. Every loss, we were within 1 or 2. Our wins were big as well. Like, honestly, I think that's a big plus for this team. Uh, Athens, see you there at 8 points in 6 playoff games. And now next year, guys, you have to look at the AHL team, who's currently down 2-1 to one in their series. Got to win the next 2 straight. And they cannot do it. Wow. Win the division. Out in the first round, classic. And check this out, guys. The Columbus Blue Jackets just won the Stanley Cup. Fantilli's in year two. At this point, they would have fired Babcock less than two years ago. So what a turnaround for that team. Um, LA there picking first overall, jumping up from seven. Arizona jumps from nine to two. Of course, it's the Michael Misa draft. So LA gets him. We we'll go along with Kopitar, Byfield, Dubois, Deneau. I mean, their center depth's absolutely ridiculous. Kind of feel bad for Ottawa, Pittsburgh. Both dropping down. And now we'll take a quick look here, guys, at the playoff stats. Just to see how our players did. So behind Athanasiu, but Dart almost a point per game. Same with Radish to Shane. Anyone not perform? I mean, Phil Kessel, three points. Call, three points. They did better than that in the regular season. Goaltending wise, Hofer actually had really nice numbers. Definitely not his fault. He was trying his best. The team just couldn't get in depth in front of him. Um, in terms of the playoff tree here, guys, you got Columbus sweeping the Detroit Red Wings. In history, it always goes the other way. So good for them, I guess. They also followed up with a sweep against the Rangers. Capitals in five and the Avs in five. I believe that's a record for the fewest amount of games played to win a Stanley Cup. They played 18 games, only losing two times. Like, that is crazy. I think the record is 18 or 19 games. Unbelievable run there for the CBJ. We'll take a look at the awards next year, obviously. I think we know all the team awards. Individually here, McDavid. Our Ross Trophy again. Also gets the Hart. Um, Adam Fox, of course, James Norris. I mean, the point production he had. Also got the Lady Bing. Didn't have a lot of penalties. Uh, Marco Casper, Calder, love it. Johnny Goudreau there, got the Con Smythe. Carter Hart, take it to Vesna, also the William Jennings, Pareko, Bill Masterton, Capitals coach Jack Adams, kind of interesting choice, honestly, Couturier, Selkie, uh, McDavid, Ted Lindsay, and then of course Matthews there with the Marisha Shard. And I turned to the HL guys, the Lehigh Valley Phantoms with the Calder Cup. Again, we won our division for the second straight year. I don't know why your team can't perform though in the playoffs. Individually, Ob Cabell, most points, also at MVP, uh, Suter there, most goals, Stenberg, best rookie, Simisha, best defenseman, very cool, Teresov, best goalie. They know you MVP of the playoffs. Suter also got sportsmanship. Gleason their community involvement. And then Tarasov, lowest goals against. And now before we get to the draft, guys, I realized I totally forgot to check contract extensions. Probably because I wasn't too worried about, you know, the cap. We were so far under it. Are you kidding me? Connor Bedard's now 96 overall. And he still has one more year's entry level contract. That's why I said in the first episode, our third year was our best chance to win the cup. As having a 96 overall player making less than a million bucks is essentially a cheat code. Um, Jones there dropped a ring by one. Reichel's actually up a couple. Uh, Domi, what's he going to ask for? 8.4. I mean, he has an 87 now. Athanasiu wants 6.5. Taylor Hall, I said, I'm bringing back no matter what. And he actually wants a very fair contract, probably because he's a bit older there at 33. He wants three years. I mean, he might start to fall off. I'm obviously just going to keep bringing him back. So we'll do two years at 5 million. I think that's fair for Hall. Um, Kessel, if he wants to come back for cheap, he wants almost five. We're paying him four last year. I wouldn't mind, you know, keeping the Ironman streak going, though. 
Mark Giordano, Justin Schultz, Ian Cole. I mean, we'll take a look at all these vets probably later. I don't really see us saving too much money on them right now. Joel Hofer, though, now in 84. Could potentially save a little bit of money on. One year, four or five. Okay. I definitely like the two years there. Keep him at an RFA. Team will take four and a half. And then to be our backup, Soderblom wants 375. I mean, I'll keep one of our current players to offer him a bit of money. And now look at retired players here, guys. Ryan Suter calls it quits. Same with Derek Stepin. Trevor Lewis, Derek Ryan. Really no one too crazy other than that. I think I saw Matt Martin there. In terms of the goalies, Brian Elliott, Jonas Enroth. And so we're now at the draft here, guys. Kings picking first overall. That pick is not on the block. Hopefully our scouts found some steals. Oh, wow. You actually have this made-up guy, Colby Chiodo. Medium franchise, American. Going to go first overall with Misa going two. Uh, Felix Kirko there, I don't think is real either. Adam Benak is. Same with Roger McQueen, Jordan Gavin, Matthew Schaefer. But all, a bunch of those guys at the top. Um, definitely we're not. Now, take a look at the gems. Guaranteed low elite that's going to go like 7th round. That's actually crazy value. Even this guy is going to go in the 3rd round. Could be decent. And look at this, guys. I sorted by potential. Gary Saad, guaranteed medium league goalie. Going to be a early 3rd round pick. That is insane. And Gabriel Daigle here, I know is a medium league goalie. He'll be a late 1st round pick. We actually have 2 first, so could take him as well. Uh, Reese Hamilton here, I don't think is medium elite. I feel like he's probably medium top 4. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. And Keegan Voros here, guaranteed medium top four defenseman, early second round pick. That's pretty good value. And our next year, guys, we're trying to make sure the Devils to get their ninth overall pick, which is actually on the block, offering up number 19. So we're trying to jump up 10 spots here, also offering signing rights to Max Domi. Again, I don't want to pay him what he's asking for, like eight and a half million or whatever. Last year, he had a pretty solid season, putting up 56 points, but I just don't think, you know, he's worth the money. I'm um, also do Kershev here. They get, he's a solid player. Still has a year left to grow. He tore up the AHL, but I really don't see him being an NHL player for us. So kind of give him a chance there with the Devils. Coolman just coming back as a roster spot. The value looks to be on our side, or if not, it's like very, very close even. Let's we'll see what the Devils say. Trades rejected. We aren't where we need to be in the value offered, which I kind of figured, but obviously you're not going to throw out your best offer first. Uh, they don't really like any of our goalies. Okay, I'm thinking um, we have... Two, we have three second round picks next year. I feel like the Maple Leafs will probably be better than the Islanders and it's got more value. So try on a second round pick onto this too. I think at this point, they got to say yes. There you go. Okay, so that's a big time trade. The reason I wanted number nine was, honestly, it was the highest pick on the block. Plus two at number nine. We can still get a medium elite player. So we'll send this pick. We'll see who went before that. So Schaefer there, Gavin, McQueen, Benak, Kilger, Kirka, Misa, and the Chioto guy. All medium elite potential or higher. There should still be one guy left. And it's this guy here, John Fernandez, Swiss dude. I think I'm like 99% sure he's made up because I've never heard of him. Also, Fernandez isn't a very Swiss name, but similar style, Sean Couturier, NHL ready. I mean, if he ends up being like an awesome third liner, I think it's a great pick at number nine. Let's see, 79 of the draft. That was a better pick than the two before us, so that was awesome. And I just sent to pick number 25 here, guys. As I mentioned, I think I'm actually going to be eyeing a Gabriel Daigle, guaranteed medium league goalie, could be our goalie of the future. And yeah, 68 medium lead. I'm with the 25th pick. That's awesome. And now, guys, I'm going back to the Devils, trying to jump up 10 spots again. I'm actually offering them a fourth round pick, which I think is pretty fair to jump up in the second round. And yeah, they say yes. I'm not sure like what you know the math says for the value there, but that one I think you know was a good move. So at pick 40, I'm hoping there's a guy here that's supposed to go at 42, and he is. Okay, Voros here was the guaranteed medium top four. There's also this center here, guaranteed low lead. He kind of slipped a little bit. Our scouts have him ranked 32. Central scouts 39. NHL ATA is three years. Let's take a look at Voros here. NHL ATA four years. Similar style Shea Weber. Wow. I mean, we just drafted a center ninth overall. The thing is, I like the fact this guy starts out at a higher rating. Am I really going to switch it up right now? I mean, could make a trade to get both. I feel like let's take this guy. Dorian and De Salvatore. 66 low elite. Not bad at all. And next year, guys, I'm offering the Coyotes a second round pick next year, plus a fourth and a sixth this year for their second. I want to make sure we get that defenseman. They say yes. Again, I think the value there was pretty fair. I didn't want to risk, you know, them taking him because he is one of the next two guys up. So Keegan and Voros, we get him as well. 6-5 defenseman, I just realized. I feel like this draft so far has been going quite well. And next year, guys, I'm trying to make another draft pick trade with the Washington Capitals. I want their two second round picks. Both are late seconds, literally like the second and third last picks in the second round. Uh, for Co-op there, he's a medium starter goalie we signed. He's all right. We've got obviously a lot better goalie prospects now. Second round pick next year, which actually has more value than those seconds because they assume we'll be not winning the Stanley Cup essentially. And then a fourth round pick this year. The value's on our side actually by quite a bit, but I'm, I'm fine with where it's at. See what they say. Trades accepted. Yeah. So that means we can actually get two really good players I've been eyeing. Very safe picks too. Like I'm going to be taking these guys 
at about you know five to ten picks early. So the first one we gotta take here, guys, is that goalie Gary Sod. He was supposed to go you know between 67, 71 there. Guaranteed medium elite, 58 overall. Got a ton of goalie prospects now to you know work with. Hopefully, you know one of them ends up being sick. We can trade whoever it doesn't end up being the starter. Uh, next year we're taking Nicholas Priestap from France, 64 low top six. Okay, I mean he was a gem. I feel like end of the second round low top six could be better, but that's all right. And we're actually sitting now, guys, all the way to I think the seventh round. I'm hoping that one guy is still there. He was like probably the biggest steal I found. And don't tell me he got drafted. Mika Lumala there could be lowly. We'll take a chance. And he's a low top six, 49 overall. Not the best, but I mean, the rest of the draft went very, very well. Uh, definitely cannot complain. I mean, medium elite forward, medium elite goalie. Uh, we got two very solid second round picks. Another medium elite goalie. Super happy with that. And look at that, guys. Taylor Hall Dix off the offer we made him. Uh, same with Starblom. Hofer wants more money. Okay, so we're going to have a lot to work with here. Uh, money is not an issue right now in Chicago. As you can see, we have over 50 million in cap space. Um, ridiculous. Obviously, um, Bedard's going to take a ton of that next year. But for next season, we probably get some big one-year deals. So Hofer, I want to look at first. Um, 1.5 for one he wants now. That's actually, his price went down. It was definitely more than 3 million for two years. So this is crazy. Um, again, I'd like to keep him RFA. This way, we have like the control. Uh, Stauber there. I think we can find a better AHL starter at this point. Also, too, love seeing three medium league goalies, Daigle, Saad, Eddie. And so I'm going to start off here, guys, looking at the forwards. Again, Athens CU wants 5.9. I'm going to think about it. I mean, we have 50 million. I can't be too stingy. Phil Kessel, I want to keep the Ironman streak alive until he retires. So one year, 5 million. He's lucky I like him. Uh, Corey Perry's 40 now. He wants 1.4. I don't know if that makes sense. Pull Yarby. He wants 2.2. Doesn't really do anything super special for us. I think at this point, uh, we let him go. Lysel and Nazar there, both 80s now. Definitely making the jump to the NHL team. Uh, Felino's a 79. He wants 1.8. I think we can find guys for dirt cheap to play on the fourth line. Uh, Fernandez honestly might be a fourth line center for us. I know he's got mainly potential. Maybe he'll be third line center, but um, definitely going to sign to a contract here. Mackenzie Edmussel there, I just qualified. Kachuk, Kuhlman. They're both going to get let go. I mentioned last episode, I'd have to sign Oliver Moore now. Helenus, there's a 75. I think we give him a contract. Uh, again, playing the AHL. Maybe even NHL, honestly, if he grows a bit more this summer. And now looking at our defense here, guys. Jones and Murphy are both returning. The next four are all pending free agents. I think both Kurczynski and Vlasic will be pencil in the NHL next year. So we only have to bring two of these guys back. Giordano's the vet at 41. He wants $4 million. Schultz wants 4 8 on a two-year. Cole there wants 2.6. He's only one overall lower. Shattenkirk's the worst. He wants 1.8. So I think we let go of Shattenkirk. I think we have to keep Cole because he's the best value. And then I guess Korchinski, honestly, he's offensive defenseman. He kind of takes the role of Justin Schultz. So at that point, I think we let go of Schultz. Keep Giordano, the team dad, 41 years old, especially since we're not bringing back either Perry or Felino. We'll offer Giordano for one year that 4 million. And honestly, you know what? With Ian Cole, we could just wait until the free agency. I'm sure we can sign him if we want to, but if there's somebody really good available we can put in our top six, not just next year, but for the future. I think it makes more sense to uh, potentially have the money for that and so i think that's all the offers we had to make guys i'm curious to see like what the cap space will be once they all go through how to resign the head coach as well i feel like he's done well so i actually extended him for eight years which is the rest of the franchise series hofer rejected okay why is it so hard to get this guy signed uh giordano said yes phil kessel wants to test free agency no phil what are you doing uh fernandez the guy we just drafted ninth overall said yes i think the rest of this is just like ahl players so basically we have to pay phil a bit more Again, he's so lucky he's Phil Kessel. No one else would I do this for, so we'll offer 5-5. Five, five. Over here, guys, I guess we'll have to probably overpay because he wants one year, not two. But, um, again, I think two years makes sense. He should be, you know, going up in rating if our team's better next year. We'll try offering three and a half. And in regards to Athens to you guys, I was hemming and hawing about what to do. But, honestly, I feel like we already have enough forward depth. And with all the cap we have, we can definitely go big game hunting, sign, like, two-star forwards. So, we keep Athens to you at that point, pushing some of our young players onto the fourth line. Doesn't make sense. I'm going to let him go. Save the cap. Again, use that towards, you know, hopefully a better player, somebody in the high 80s. Hofer finally said yes. Same with Phil Kessel. We've still got 40 million in cap space there. All we have to sign, like I said, is a couple forwards, one defenseman, and I think that's it. Goalies were fine, so uh, we can definitely, like I said, sign some big name players. All right, guys, so it's now free agency. I'm hoping there's some good players here we can get. Uh, Bucinavich, Nick Ehlers would be sick. Brad Marchand, Victor Hedman. Are you kidding me? Uh, let's Luke Hughes, but he's an RFA, I'm sure. Yeah, okay. Carter Verhage, as I mentioned, Hedman. Jacob Chikrin, Domi's there. Condre Miller, also an RFA. TJ Oshie, Ivan Provo, I want seven. 
Gavrikov, Athanasiu, Nick Backstrom, Patty Kane I could bring back. I don't know if you guys would want me to do that. Um, definitely let me know, I guess, before he retires. He's already 36. But, all right, first things first, we got to go get Nick Ehlers. Like, he's 29, not that old, 90 overall. He's a playmaker. Having him, Bedard, and I guess Taylor Hall in that first line, like, would be so nasty. He's super fast, too. Uh, we have $40 million, so why would we not try and get Nick Ehlers? Seven years, pays him until he's 36, so... In the seventh year, this contract might not look too great, but I mean, that'd be one year before we're done. I'm trying to think. Seven by 11 for Nick Ehlers, 90 overall. Seems pretty fair. We're going for him. Uh, Buchnevich, one overall more, one year older. Plus, he actually wants like one and a half million dollars more, so we're going to avoid him. Marchand wants a lot for a 37 year old, but at the same time, we have a ton of money right now. If we did like a one year deal on Marchand, that wouldn't be like too terrible just to try and go for it. Again, with Bedard on his entry level. We still have like $30 million here to spend. Um, we can get Hedman and Chikrin and Marchand, honestly, because like they're not all costing 10 million bucks. We might as well try and do it, it'd be insane. So Marchand, one year, um, we'll offer eight five. Victor Hedman actually wants a one year, a lot of competition. For Hedman, we're gonna offer one year, we're gonna offer 10 five. So again, we're going out there, trying to get these guys. Chikrin's only 27. He could be part of this core for the future. He wants four. We're gonna give him what he wants. He wants seven. We could do it's eight seven overall. We could do eight by four. We'll still have 20 million dollars to sign Bedard next year, as both Marchand and Hebner one year deals. So this is probably the most money I've ever offered out, I think, in one free agency, but might as well go for it. In terms of goalies, lines, all marks actually available. Honestly, I trust in Hofer though, especially he's young, he's getting better, really good price. Marc Andre Fleury, 85 overall, 1.6. Okay, um, he could be in a tandem with Hofer. If Hofer grows, he's the same rating or potentially backing up Flurry, but that's just too good of a price to pass on, I feel. Um, okay, Flurry. He actually played in Chicago for a little bit. If we do this, so I don't want to just go in the AHL, so we'll have to wait to see what Flurry says before signing the AHL goalie. Try 175 for one year. We are being super aggressive right now, but hopefully it works for us. Uh, Clang there, 23, sunny 7, medium starter. He's actually really good. Um, I think I can make an offer on him, and even if we get Flurry, it'll be okay. Try three years there at 950k. He's a very good AHL goalie. And in terms of free agents, gotta kill Thomas here, 2577, medium top six. Might as well, you know, give a chance to him, just to lead him in. Kershev actually back available. We'll take him back. I mean, they're not gonna keep him. We will two years 850k. What is Anaheim doing? Drew Hellison, 2478, medium top four. It's cool to see him finally in the game. They're not even keeping him for two years. He wants to lead him in. Let's try 950k. I'm also on Antonio Stranges, 2372. He's got the elite edges because his uh, edge work's insane. If we can get him three years league men, maybe he'll grow in the AHL. Maverick Brook here as well, guys. 2378, high top nine. Why is he not getting signed? I don't understand it. Same with Reese there. We'll make both these guys offers. And I'm next year, guys, trying to make a big time trade with the Calgary Flames. Offer them Matt Duchesne. He's got one year left at 475. I feel like we got a lot of guys coming in. He's about to be 35. I don't want him to drop an overall again and his trade value go down. So I want to take advantage and trade him right now, coming off a pretty good season. And with him here, I got Sternborg and Entwistle. Honestly, they're probably never going to make the NHL team. So just kind of getting rid of a couple of contracts, make sure we have enough for all the free agent offers. Obviously, too, Matthew Shane, you have to trade him with a city that likes their country music. Calgary fits that bill. And I'm trying to get back an insane return. Tanner Howe was the 13th pick, 2024. And then Liam Greentree here was the 14th pick, 2024. I didn't even actually realize. So they went back to back. Calgary's got both now. Somehow the value is pretty close. Both of them aren't on the block though, so I assume the Flames say no. We're gonna try it though. Trades rejected, but the value we're sending our way is insufficient. Honestly, I'd be fine with just how and a pick. I feel like if you play with Bedard, it'd be very cool. Um, we'll try how in a second. Is that more value than a green tree? Trade rejected, yeah. So we'll try how in a third here. It does suck, you know, that's on the block of the Flames because they're rebuilding, but they want to Shane and they say yes, okay. so. Tanner Howe in a third round pick for Matthew Shane, plus clear a couple contract spots. So Bedard, you know, we're getting his buddies on this team, which I think is very cool. And now we're gonna continue seeing here guys through the summer, waiting here back on all those big name free agents we made offers on. Hopefully two us making the playoffs helps to sign them. Kershaw's coming back. Reese said yes, Kill Thomas. Hellas in there, Stranges, Bjork, Cal Klang. Obviously the big fish, I'm not saying anything yet though. And Nick Ehlers accepted the seven by 11. Let's go, that is a huge signing. Brad Marchand as well, accepted the one year cash offer was most generous. Mark andre Fleury said yes. Same with Chikrin, are you kidding me? And Victor Hedman. All right, so I know some people are gonna hate this episode because we went insane in the summer, but what are you supposed to do when you have $50 million in cap space? Like, 
you got to use it. We still have $10 million. Like, we still have enough to sign Bedard next year, especially with Marshan and Hedman both being on one-year deals. We'll even have extra money after that. Like, we're definitely in a very good spot. And I'm actually going to make a small trade. The Devils offering them Vinny in a sixth. We're a fifth. We're moving up one round. Uh, Vinny, of course, ended up missing on third-round pick. Only medium fringe. We have too many good young goalies to keep them. Might as well clear out the contract spot. The Devils say yes. I feel like that was pretty fair. Now, the one thing this team still needs, guys, is a solid fourth line forward. AJ Greer here, 81 overall, grinder, only 28, so he's still pretty young, wants 1.5 for one year. I feel like he could be a fourth liner for us for a while if he wants. Okay, yeah, he actually stays pretty cheap. Let's try two years, 1.5, exactly what he's asking for. Again, I think that's really all we need. Other than that, the team is set for next season. And there we go, guys. AJ Greer said yes. And now look at this, guys. A massive offer from Montreal Canadiens. Brandon Montour for Christian Alanis, Anthony Cristoforo in a second round pick. I feel like we're already set on defense. Otherwise, though, pretty good offer. And obviously, too, it kind of shows you. I think the rebuild's over when teams are offering us one of their best defensemen for, you know, picks and prospects. Speaking of that, I would just offer a Shabbat for Helenus, Saad, Cristoforo. Again, I don't think it makes a ton of sense because we already have, like, a solid team. So we might as well keep our picks and prospects to try and, you know, keep the dynasty going for more than just one year. Now, I'm going to show you guys what the team's looking like. I'm very, very excited. I think we potentially could compete for Stanley Cup this year depending on how the sim goes, obviously. There's now Brad Marchand, Connor Bedard, and Nick Ehlers. I think that's pretty nasty. They get a plus four. You got Kessel still on the team, keeping that Ironman streak alive. I don't think anyone's ever going to break it. Like, he's 38 years old, still going. He's playing Lucas Reichel there now, 88, bunch of X-Factors, and Taylor Hall. Third line, you got a couple young players there in Lysel and Nazar getting called up, playing with Taylor Radish. Fourth line, Fernandez, we actually just drafted. Ninth overall, 79 medium leap. Hopefully he does well. There's a two-way forward. Playing Jack Drury and AJ Greer. Then defensively here, guys, we've got Victor Hedman on the team. Playing on the top here with Seth Jones. Obviously, he's gone down rating now at 86, but it's still Hedman. Plus, we only signed him there for one year. Uh, second pairing, Jacob Chikrin, a big free agent signing, 27. He can actually be a part of this core going forward. Kevin Korchinski now at 83 on the team. Murphy Giordano, very solid bottom pair defensively. Goaltending-wise, we got Hope for starting. Flurry backing him up. In terms of the power play, we've actually got Korchinski quarterback in that first power play with Ehlers, Bedard, Reichel, Marchand. Like, that looks deadly. They get a plus five. Now, power play two there is getting a minus two, but still doesn't look too terrible. You guys can see the four-man power play one there, four-man power play two. In terms of the PK, I think it looks very solid, plus five on the first unit. Uh, second unit there also doesn't look too bad. Same with the third. I made sure, too, everyone had at least some special team time, whether it be, you know, second power play, second PK, whatever. So... Hopefully, everyone will get some decent growth. Now, in terms of the HL team, they also look pretty solid. You got Offman, Kershia, Maggio on that first line. Helenus on the second. He's a 76 medium link. Could probably get called up to the team next season. Tanner Howieven, 76 medium top six. So, I feel like there's a lot to look forward to with this team, not only now, but in the future. Top deep here on the HL, Vlasic Hellison, like very solid. Nolan Allen there even is a 79. And also, too, in terms of goaltending, Kyle Klang there, he signed in the summer as a 77. He randomly grew up to an 82. So, I thought about maybe replacing Flurry with him, but. Flurry's got one year left. We'll give him another chance at his fourth Stanley Cup. Also, you guys, you did miss last episode. Conor is now the captain, youngest captain in NHL history. Uh, Murphy and Jones there are both still ranking A's. Also, I asked you guys last episode how much money I should give Conor Bedard for his extension. And the top comment came from Kevin saying, Give Bedard what he's asking for. Real life players sometimes take discounts. If they like the direction his team's heading, loyalty still counts. It'll make the team more competitive. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Conor Bedard is asking for 10.3 for six years. I'm going to give him 10.3 for six years. I think that's very, very fair. Marshan Hedman are probably just one-year rentals. Kessel, we'll have to see his rating to see if we bring him back. Now, Murphy's been pretty low on this team for quite some time. He wants almost $5 million, though, for three more years. Honestly, it's not a terrible ask. If he takes, like, four and a half to for three till he's 35, I'll get that done right now. Also, to look at some players in the AHL, Offman's 80. Could definitely get called up here soon if we don't bring back Kessel. 1.1 for one. I mean, let's try a two-year bridge deal. A million bucks, even if he doesn't get called up. We're fine. Allen there also could get called up. Two years, 800K is so cheap. Maggio here is going to extend. For some reason, doesn't let me. I think everyone else we can probably just wait on. So um, hopefully everyone we made offer on says yes. Also, two guys, before you do start this sim, I'll show you our ratings for this season. As I mentioned, uh, we're already trying to compete for the Stanley Cup here in year three. Again, I think with Dart making 950K, it's like our best opportunity to do so. As you guys can see there, we got 96 offense, 92 defense, 85 goaltending. Let's see how this team does. And there we go, guys. Connor Murphy did say yes. We're bringing him back for three more years. Offman as well. Same with Allen. Waiting here back from Bedard. Let's go. We got the kid locked up for the next eight years. Or actually, we want a six-year deal. So we actually might have to give him a new contract in the final season. Wow. Look at the offer the Flyer just made us. Cam York in a third for Offman in a third. Cam York should be higher rated. I see that he's not signed, so they don't have the money to afford him. I forgot to tell you guys, but even after signing all those big name free agents, we still had $11 million in gap space. Just ridiculous. Like, 
We were trying to spend 50, we only spent 39 or whatever. And yeah, look at that. Cam York's an 83 offensive defenseman. I mean, I think we have to say yes. He's 24, offense 22. I think we have more forward depth than defensive depth at this point. I'm pretty sure at least. That's a very good offer from the Flyers. Uh, yeah, I think we have to say yes to that. Just too good of a trade. And with Tradeway Offman, we're bringing in the GOAT, Marcel Marcel, to uh, play on the fourth line there in the AHL. Or actually, we got native chemistry. There we go. All right, guys, so now we got to give Cam York a contract. He wants 2.5 for one. I mean, we have the money. We can give him a longer-term deal here. Probably works out better for us. Let's try four years at 4.5. I think uh, it'll definitely end up being, you know, a good contract in the future. Or actually, let's try 4.4 to start. There we go, guys. Cam York said yes. So at this point, oh my goodness, Thomas Shabbat in the third. Uh, they want Helena's Daigle and Yamachuk, though. They want two medium elites. Um, Shabbat, we can kind of look at that at the deadline. Not going to do that right now. What I actually have to do here is call up Cam York. And what I'm thinking is he'll probably take over Giordano, who's now down to 82. Uh, Giordano, I thought, would have been better defensively. But I was looking at their stats. So he is a two-way defenseman. But you got 87D awareness, 88 shot block, stick check. If you look at Cam York here, he's got pretty much the same. 87, 85, 88. So slightly worse shot block, but much better offensively. Bring him in there, play with Murphy, who's a defensive defenseman. I think he'll do solid at this point, too. Uh, Giordano scratched for $4 million. We can probably just trade him for whatever we can get. And you know what, guys? I'm going to try a future here I almost never used. That's a fine trade, simply because it was a big-name player. They usually come up with nothing, but Giordano should be able to give us something. Okay, 12 trades. Third-round pick. Merz Lincoln, we don't really need. Third-round pick. Bobrovsky, low top six. Um, okay, so far, really nothing. Too great. Two sevens. Oh, my goodness. Um, honestly, I think the best offer is the first one here, Carolina, offering us a third, and Walensky, I'll take that. Again, Giordano, we only need at this point. Now, the Ducks are trying to offer us Cam Fowler for Cristoforo and Maggio. Kind of funny, all three of these guys played for the Spitfires, but gotta say no, I feel like our defense is in a fine spot. Oh my goodness, the Penguin just offered us Eric Carlson in a third, for Helena Strong just in a third. Oh my. Wow, I gotta take a look at Carlson's overall. I don't, there's no way I'm giving up Helena for this, but... I might consider it at the deadline, depending where we're at. He's got 21 points, 23 games, almost a point per game. I mean, he's so, so good. If we're looking like contenders, right now we're only 11, 8, and 3. I'll maybe make a big splash of Carlson. Right now, though, it doesn't really seem worth it. A bunch of teams really want Helena's. Bro, Dean and Zuccarello here from Minnesota, plus a third. Again, saying no, though. And so, from Athena's over here, guys, the record 19, 12, and 4. Pretty solid. We're one point back. The Jets were second. Uh, only five points back of the Avalanche for first in the division. Leading scorer here, Brad Marchand, over a point per game. I, I really expected it to be Connor Bedard, who's 96 overall. Uh, Kershaw in the AHL, but a point per game. And they're not doing too well, though. I thought the AHL team was stacked. They got an 82 goalie. They're fifth in the division. Maybe just a slow start. We'll see if they can turn around. This has to be like the fifth number one defenseman offered to us. Obviously, Shabbat was, Carlson, I think Montour as well. I didn't show you guys. Now Vegas offers us Alex Petrangelo. Tanner Howe, Soderblom in the seventh. That's not even that bad of an ask. Again, right now doesn't make sense, but the deadline, you know, if we're in it, I'm definitely going to consider that. Vancouver here wants to give us Mikhail and Heronic. Honestly, I don't really want either part of those contracts. Look at this, guys. Another number one defenseman just offered to us. Mackenzie Weger in a third. For Saad Howe and Yakimachuk, again, saying no, but interesting to see so many NHL teams win a trade away number one defenseman this season. I don't think I've ever had that many offered to me. Maybe two because our wants are like a number one defenseman, even though... We have Jones, we have Hedman, we have Korchinski, I think, is playing well. Uh, we're currently 38, 21, and 4 at the deadline. That's very good. We're still second though in the division behind the Avalanche of 87. They're first in the West, and then the Capitals actually first in the East with 86 points. So you don't usually see the Capitals still doing good this much later. Marchand there, our leading scorer, just under a point per game. I wish for Darby over a point per game. That's all right. AHL, Kershaw still doing solid. Their team, though, still not in the wild card, though. They're not too far back either, so... We'll see whether or not they can maybe make a push here. At the deadline, though, we have to be buyers. Like, based on how the team's played, like, that's where we got to be. Hopefully, there's, you know, some more. Oh, my goodness. Kaprizov, 93 overall. I mean, this would toss so much. But if we could have him, Bedard, and I don't even know, uh, I guess Helena's as our future first line. That'd be so deadly. Martin Nietzsche there. Jack Eichel. Shea Theodore, five years left. Thomas Shabbat, of course. Jake Ottinger. Oh, my goodness. Vince Dunn, JT Comfort. Brandon Montour, Rajas Anderson. The top players are pretty crazy on this trade deadline. So everyone always wants me to get Kaprizov. I'm going to try here. It's going to cost a ton though. And you know what guys? The first trade I'm actually trying to make here is with Dallas Stars for Jake Ottinger. I'm not sure why he's on the block. He's such a good goalie. 89 overall at 27 years old. He's one of the better young goalies in the NHL real life. Even in this game, 27. 
still isn't that old. Offering up Joel Hofer there, 85 at 25, so two years younger, obviously four overall less. Also Eddie there, a medium league goalie prospect. We actually had three of those. We also have Saad, who's a year younger, one overall higher, and then Daigle is the best, 1976. So could potentially take over for Ottinger in the not too distant future and decline that crack in trade. So this is a great trade for us now, and obviously until Daigle is ready to be the starter, probably signed under like a two or three year contract. Let's see what the stars say. The value's pretty equal. Trades rejected. I thought, you know, it was pretty fair. Maybe they said we were quite far off. I mean, we got a lot of prospects. Can probably throw somebody in. Um, Oliver Moore, for sure not. Maybe Boros there, 1861, medium top four. Trades accepted, all right. So we just got a legit number one goalie. I'm still eyeing Kaprizov as well, too. If we make these trades, we're making the Central Division a bit worse, taking, you know, Dallas's goalie, Minnesota's best player. Ottawa again trying to trade us Thomas Shabbat. 7.8 million there for three years. I'm definitely not going to do this trade. I'm just curious. Shabbat's rating. He's 89 overall. I mean, he is better than Jacob Chikrin. He's making 7.8. What do we sign Chikrin for? 87 making 8. Is there a world where we could just flip Chikrin back to Ottawa and get Shabbat? who's better and making less money. All right, guys, I'm offering Ottawa Chikrin a second and pre-staff who's a low top six forward for Shabbat. I don't think they'll do this. I, I just realized Ottawa sucks right now, 17 and 42. Let's see what they say. Trades rejected quite far off. All right, guys, so to try to get Shabbat here, I'm gonna offer up Saad, one of our other medium league goalies with Jacob Chikrin. Again, essentially we're paying a medium league goalie to upgrade two overall from Chikrin to Shabbat. We're also saving, you know, almost 200K there in salary. Let's see what Ottawa says. I think it's worth it for us. They reject it. Interesting. So they don't want Chikrin's salary. They're trying to just completely rebuild. I feel like we want Kaprizov too. We have to move Chikrin though in this trade. I could move Lysa here as well. 81 overall. Pretty solid young forward. It's a lot to give up for Shabbat, but I feel like that's a pretty good offer there for Shabbat. And yeah, okay. Ottawa's saying yes. So uh, we upgrade the D. Now we got to try and make a blockbuster happen for Kaprizov. All right, guys. Now here's the blockbuster trade I came up with for Kaprizov. Taylor Bradish is there because... He's on the third line, probably going to get passed by some of our younger players soon. But he's on a very good contract that thinks improves his value. Uh, Fernandez, of course, who drafted ninth overall. Not bad. But it's got to be either him or Lannis in this trade to get that, you know, big value from being medium elite. Yakima Chaka there as well. Has a good amount of value, medium top four defenseman. First round pick this year and next year. So we are going all out here for Kaprizov. Obviously, won't be bringing back Marshan or Hedman next year. Can pay him their salary. So see what Minnesota says. The value is pretty equal. He's on the block. We couldn't really make much better of an offer than this. Trades rejected. The value just isn't there whatsoever. Wow. So we'd really have to give up something crazy to get him. And I know you guys are trying to make a trade for Schmaltz instead of Kaprizov. 87 overall, two-way forward, complaining we're in our lineup. Offering up first round pick this year. Two low top 6D defensive prospects. Pre-stop there, low top 6 forward. Value's pretty equal. Trades rejected. Okay, we got to add something quick here. We're running out of time. Um, I'll also do a second next year. I think we're going for it this year. And trades accepted. Okay, so might have slightly overpaid, but running out of time. I think we had to get, you know, one more NHL forward. Schmaltz, very solid. If you guys forget, he was actually drafted by Chicago back in the first round of 2014. So coming back to the original team, hopefully can do big things for us. Take a look at the rest of the trade deadline. Heronic to the Stars. Interesting, after they trade away Ottinger. Campe to the Bruins. Um, Anderson there to the Kings for Deneau. That's a pretty good trade. Our trade, of course, for Shabbat. Uh, Matheson there to the Blue Jackets. Brookstrand to the Islanders. White Cloud to the Flyers. Lindell and Zadarov. To the Devils, our trade for Andre there. The Leafs get Demko, Gavrikov, and Zuccarello, and, and Justin Hole to the Capitals. So Ryan Graves, Connor Dewar. Uh, the Red Wings there got Kabanov. The Jets got Hendrikov and Kulikov. So both players are trying to Winnipeg. All right, guys, so after that busy trade deadline, here's an update look at the team. Marshan, Bedard, Ehlers still on our first line. We now have Schmaltz on the second, though. Playing with Reichel and Hall. Third line's Kessel, Nazar, Radish. Fourth line there, not changed. Defensively here, Shabbat's on the top pair with Jones. Korchinski and Hedman's a new second pair with York and Murphy on the bottom. Hedman, I think, actually lost one of his X-Factors during the season, so good thing they only signed to a one-year deal. Goal tank there, you can see Ottinger is now our starter. Special team-wise, it's pretty much the same, but I've actually got Seth Jones on the top unit just because he's put up a decent amount of points, 40 points. Uh, second unit there, you can see we actually got Shabbat on, and that's because Korchinski was playing power play one and second pairing and only had 17 points on the year. Just simply not good enough. Also, too, quickly, guys, AHL here, you can see is a little bit different. We lost Othman. Uh, I think maybe a couple other guys, but should still be doing, I think, better than they are, but maybe they'll make a late playoff push here. All right, guys, for the end of the season now, the record of 51, 26, and 5, over 50 wins on the year, cannot be upset. 107 points there to finish. Avalanche, though, at 113. Tied with the Capitals there, so I'm just curious who's going to have the President's Trophy tiebreaker. 
Um, in terms of leading scorer, it was Brad Marchand, just shy of a point per game. AHL wise, Curry should have a 66, and it looks like they're missing the playoffs, which I can't believe. I thought the AHL team was honestly pretty stacked. Luckily, I mean, Stanley Cup matters a lot more than the Calder Cup. So behind Marchand there, Ehlers 78, but Dart only at 74. Like, that is crazy. 96 overall, only having 74 points. Doesn't make a ton of sense. The year prior, he had 89. He was lower rated. He's averaging over 20 minutes of ice time a night, shooting the puck a lot. I don't really understand that one. He's playing with good wingers. Nick Schmaltz there, actually, played very solid. Just shy of 60. St. Lucas Reichel. Victor Hedman still put up 50 points. And Seth Jones, even Taylor Hall. So, I mean, overall, I can't be too upset with this team. Just Bedard there having a bit of a down year. Um, Ottinger here, 908, 285, I think. You know, getting him was a huge upgrade. Mark andre Fleury, of course, should be more than capable of backup. Now, our two HL goalers are actually playing really well. 909-913, you know, 2.6, whatever, for their goals against. Like, HL team, I guess we just don't have a big enough score. Like, Kershev, 66, Maggio, 56, Izakov, Hayes, only other guys with 50-plus. I guess that's what it is. Everyone else there is in the 30s. Just the HL team just simply isn't scoring enough. Now, in terms of the NHL, McDavid there finished first in the league, 110, followed by Nuge with 107. Zabanajad, Panarin, McKinnon, Forsberg, Robertson there, Pashnak, Kucherov. In terms of goals, Marisha Shard there goes to Robertson with 54. Now in offensive scoring, McAvoy put up 87 points. Are you kidding me? I mean, he doesn't even have that crazy of like offensive stats. So just a huge year for him. Theodore behind him, 85. McCarr, most of the guys you'd expect. And in terms of goaltenders, guys, Kemper there had 44 wins. Same percentage for a starter, though, goes to Gibson with 918. Geez, big year for him. And then goals against there. Also going to be going to Gibson. So he's probably taking home the Vesna Trophy. Rookie skaters, we had a couple. No one that crazy. Colby Chiodo, who went first overall over Misa. Uh, LA Kings probably winning the Calder Trophy. Demidov as well was playing with them. So the Kings have a couple uh, sick rookies there. Zach Benson here on the St. Louis Blues. I forgot the Buffalo Sabres trade him. Also make the NHL probably a little bit later than he will be in real life. But Nazar there, uh, sixth in scoring for rookies. We'll take that. And now next year, guys, look at the entire league. We actually finished third place there with 107 points. So not too bad at all considering... You know, where we were in that first year. Wow, Arizona, Seattle, both squeaking into the playoffs, 18-20 seed. Ottawa, oh my goodness. That's got to be one of the worst seasons ever. 38 points, a 23.2 win percentage. What happened to them? Actually, guys, never mind. Apparently, it's not the worst record of an 82-game season. But Ottawa does hold it with the San Jose Sharks finishing 11-71-2. That is insanely bad. Like, I don't even know. Um, goals for were actually on the first page now, which is good to see. Goals against here. We are not on the top of the page, but we're not at the bottom either. So at least, you know, our goals for is getting up there. And now in the first round here, guys, we're going to be playing the Winnipeg Jets. So hopefully can take them out here and move on to round two. Obviously, they don't have Nick Ehlers. He's on our team. So should give us a bit of an advantage. Still, though, they got Kyle Connor there and Shifley on the first line. Niederreiter, Velarde, Perfetti, Iafello. Kopp's back on the team, as I mentioned. Lowry, Granlin. Lambert's down the NHL. Sam Barlow, Lawton on the fourth line. Defensively, they've added Brody, Graves, Kulikov back there, Schultz. Goaltending-wise, Connor Hellebuck starting, Brassois backing him up. And of course, two guys, they got Hellebuck starting there with Brassois backing him up. Hellebuck, of course, just extended with the Jets in real life. Same with Shifley, like eight years, eight and a half million. In game there, he got seven million for four years, I guess it would be, because we're, you know, three years in. And Shifley here got 10 million for four years. So interesting. Shifley got a bit more in game. Hellebuck there got a little bit less. In real life, I feel like the price was really good, but the term was a bit long, paying them to like their 37 or 38. But regardless, guys, we'll get started here with the playoffs against the Jets. First two games, Chicago. We get a 4-3 OT loss and a 4-2 loss. All right, we're headed to Winnipeg now. This team, okay, 5-4-2, and I was like, I was going to say, we're too good to get swept. And a 6-5 loss, wow. Backs against the wall here, down 3-1, head home to Chicago, and we can't win at home. 3-2 OT loss. I mean, we lost three of the four games by one goal. The other one was by two. That is so disappointing. Now, the good news is, guys, the AHL team actually did this weekend in the playoffs. Currently up 2-1 to one here on the Griffins. Can they close it out? They do. Wow, it went to game five. But they're moving on now to round two. They got the Iowa Wild here. Let's see. Another five-game series. We'll just sim through this whole thing. And we lose in three straight. That's tough. All right, guys, the playoffs are now complete. We actually lost the eventual Stanley Cup champions in the Winnipeg Jets. So it makes me feel a little bit better, I guess, about getting knocked out in the first round. Minnesota jumping from 5-1. to one. Going to have the right to pick Gavin McKenna first overall. Very cool, especially if they're losing Caprizo this summer. I guess they're just completely rebuilding. Hedman was our playoff scoring leader, 7 points, 5 games. Uh, did not expect to see that. I'm not sure what the rest of the team was doing here. After him, wow, next closest guy was Castle with 4. The two veterans were actually trying to win a cup. Schmaltz, Reichel, but Dart only at 3. Same with Ehlers. Uh, Brad Marchand's our leading scorer in the regular season. 
and he had two whole points. Uh, yeah, team need to play better than that. Goal train wise, Ottinger did not do well enough. And I'll look at the playoff tree here. You guys can see the Jets, of course, beat us in the first round, swept the Avs, beat the Ducks in six, and then the Leafs in six for an all Canadian Stanley Cup final. And next year, guys, taking a look at the awards. Again, Jets win the Stanley Cup, Avs their presence trophy. Individual awards here McDavid with another Ross trophy. Hart, though, goes to Nathan McKinnon. Morrissey, James Norris, okay. Benarin, Lady Bing. Demidov got the call to over his teammate, which is kind of funny because his teammate had more points. Shifley, Con Smythe. Gibson did get the Vezina, also won the William Jennings. Kirker there on the Sens got the Bill Masterton. Arizona coach Jack Adams. Kopitar with the Selkie. McKinnon, Ted Lindsay, and then and then Robertson there with Marisha Shard. And I'll look at the HL words here, guys. The Lehigh Valley Phantoms actually won back to back Calder Cups. Very cool for them. Porch is there, the most points in the HL. Pretty cool. I'm pretty sure he actually made the Bruins team this season, or at least for now. Also got MVP. Uh, Cogley Hino, most goals. Wow. Demick there, best rookie. Pishek, best defenseman. Blomqvist, best goalie. DeLoria, MVP of the playoffs. Would never expect to see that. Uh, Poitras, sportsmanship. Ross Potnick, community involvement. Hopefully I said his name right. And then Blomqvist there, lowest goals against. And next year, guys, take a look at retired players. Joe Velsky calls it quits. Actually, fans there with the Dallas Stars. Blake Wheeler on Montreal. Sam Gagne, Broussard, Palmieri. So uh, some pretty big names here. Cogliano put up the most goals in the AHL, then decided to call it quits. Goaltending wise, Mark andre Fleury. Would have been nice to get him a Stanley Cup in his final year, but that's all right. All right, guys, so we're going to the draft now. Of course, like I mentioned, McKenna should be the first overall pick unless uh, there's some crazy created guy. So we'll take a look here, and yeah, McKenna is projected first overall. Behind him, you got five medium elites. Take a look at gems here. Uh, Bluedoff, medium top four. It's like a late first rounder. Low top six doesn't seem worth it. Um, ooh, guaranteed mainly goalie going to go in the third round. That's the exact kind of player we like. That's why I'm so willing to trade him away. Are you kidding me? We've also got a guaranteed medium lead center. Again, going in like the third round. We gotta make sure we got a couple third round picks for both those guys. But great work by the scouting department this season. I love that. And now next year, you guys, I'm offering the Boston Bruins. Marchand signing right for the seventh to get a third round pick. Actually went up in rating after last season. 89 overall now, but simply can't afford him. He's probably got like one year left before he retires. Let him retire as a Bruin. They say no to that. Interesting. I thought that was pretty fair. Um, I mean, I would even do like a fifth. I should have read what they said. They don't feel Brad Marchand fits the need of their team. That is hilarious. All right, guys, I'm going to try trading him to Buffalo instead. I've actually got to retain half his money as the game still has a salary cap at the draft, which it really shouldn't. Like, this contract should be zero, not 8.5. Luckily, it doesn't hurt us. And they say yes. So that's big, as obviously I showed you guys the two guaranteed meme elites. We now have the two third round picks to get them. And so we'll just send the third round now, guys, to make our picks. Uh, first, I actually want to show you the first round, though. So. Gavin McKenna, first overall, 83 medium franchise. And I'm sure a lot of you want me to get him to pair him up with Bedard because they're cousins, but we'll have to worry about that later on. I'm going to let Minnesota take him first overall for now. Um, the rest of the top five there, you can see is all medium elite. Even sixth pick there. Robrek currently playing for Niagara. Goes to the New York Islanders. Re rest of the first round just looks to be like medium top six forwards, medium top four defensemen. With our first pick here, guys, in the third round, we're taking Uriel Winchester, guaranteed medium elite goalie. And as you can see, it's 47 overall. We actually have back-to-back -back picks. That worked out really well, I didn't even realize. And with our next pick, we're taking Miroslav Lashtek. Hopefully uh, pretty high rated. 53 overall, medium lead center. Not the highest rated, but still. For a medium lead, going to the third round, like that's crazy value. And we now have the first pick here, guys, in the fourth round. There was actually somebody else I really wanted to get. This Huard guy could be medium elite, Clarence Huard. We're taking a chance. And he's medium bottom six. All right, well, miss 100% of the shots you don't take. We've got another pick in the fourth round. This Russian guy, Artem Kovalev, could be medium top four. We'll try it. And medium seventh. Now in the fifth, this guy here, Jalen Morrow, also could be medium top four. Medium seventh. Oh my goodness. Next year, guys, I'm offering the Kraken our seventh round pick this year for their pick next year just because there's really no one left I want. They say yes. So pick up a pick there, which obviously is always smart. If you see no one left in the free agent class, that's you know, even worth taking a chance on. Might as well try and get some picks for the future. Luckily, though, we got that medium league goalie and medium league center. I would say the draft went pretty well for us. As for now, the re phase, guys, with $26 million in cap space, you might notice Connor Bedard actually dropped in rating. Was a 96 last year, now a 94. Ehlers, I think, might have dropped in rating from a 90 to 89. Jones, I know, was a 90. Hall, though, went up in rating. Reichel dropped one. Uh, Schmaltz might have dropped one there as well. Hedman, as I mentioned, I don't think we're bringing back unless he's super cheap. Yeah, 6.4. Uh, we simply have other defense we can play instead of him. Now, Schmaltz here I actually might bring back. I was looking at him. He had a point per game for us, so he played pretty good there on that second line. He wants $5 million. Like, that's not too crazy of an ask. That's what Kessel was getting paid last year. He now wants $4 million. He's down to an 83. Uh, I don't know. I feel like Kessel's 38. He's going to start to drop off pretty soon. Like, he's an all-offense guy. we got younger players, I think, we need the ice time. So, at this point, hopefully someone else can uh, sign Kessel. And uh, keep that Ironman streak alive. I feel like we've you know done our part. Now Maggio here tried signing earlier. He wants 800k for one year. 
Now, I could give it three years for a million, or we could go long term. Depends, you know, how much we believe in him. Uh, we only need him for seven more years. If he said yes to like a 175, I think that'd be worth it, especially if he turns into, I'm hoping like an 83, we can play on our third line, you know, the rest of this thing. Jack Drury here, I'd love to have as our fourth line center still. 1.5 is a bit expensive. Uh, if he goes like 125, we'll do it. Also, see you guys, in terms of the goaltenders, obviously you guys signed Ottinger after making that big trade for him. Seven million bucks. I think he was making like six, seven before, so it's a slight raise, not much at all. Seven years, he gets like way more expensive, so I guess we'll just worry about that in the future. Um, we'll see you guys six, seven, five for six years. Pretty much what he was exactly what he was making before. Klang there can be the backup. Sarblom, I could bring back to the AHL starter. Wants 1.2. Honestly, Daigle there's a 77. He can be the AHL starter. We can sign somebody else to be the backup. All right, so Drury wants more money. Andre said yes, though. That's big. Del Mastro, Maggio, doesn't like how long that was. Christoforo said yes, same with Daigle, Yakimachuk, Colton Dock. And now we still have $20 million in cap space here, guys. So we could definitely sign Schmaltz and still have enough to get like Kaprizov, for instance. Four years he wants there. Let's try four years, $5 million right on. Now, Drury here, I think I'm gonna play hardball with, qualify him. I don't think many other teams are gonna offer him much more than that. And then for Maggio here, I'm offering pretty much the same deal, but one year less. Hopefully, that'll make him say yes. And as you guys can see there, Schmaltz said yes, same with Maggio. So I think at this point, we're pretty much good. We got almost $16 million in cap space, Drury. Have a qualifying offer on. Same with Lavoie, which is like an HL guy. Um, I think, yeah, we are in a pretty good spot here. Can still make a splash in free agency and, and still have a lot of depth as well. All right, guys, here we go. We're now at the free agency period. Hopefully, like I said, Kaprizov's available and he is 94 overall. I think he actually went up in rating. That is crazy. He wants 13.3, so... <laughs> We have like just enough for him. Could also go after Jack Eichel, 92 overall, same age. I mean, I feel like we have Lucas Reichel be our second line center. I feel like Caprizo is only asking for 400k more. He's two overall higher. Like his overall is insane there. John Carlson, Martinatius, Garland, Miller, Doc. I mean, Doc would be kind of cool to bring back. We eventually get his brother too. Hedman, of course, is free agency now. Tekshe, Mikhaev. I feel like a first line of Ehlers, Bedard, Caprizo would be absolutely nasty. So. We're going after him. Seven years is what he wants. I mean, how many other teams can kind of match this offer? 14 million. We'll definitely have to trade away somebody to be able to afford like Kurczynski's contract next season. But uh, for now, we're going after the big fish. And looking at goaltenders here, guys, we got Spencer Knight available who's an RFA, Freddie Anderson, Bobrovsky. Again, really don't need anybody but an AHL backup. So we'll just look at two ways. Whoever's got, you know, some decent potential. Um, honestly, Quap was on our team for base and RFA though. Markkinen and then Rodrigue. Now Rodrigue would be the starter. We want a backup. Markkinen, 24, 71, medium starters, not terrible. Boyko here though, seems like the better option. 23, 77, medium fringe. Dude, 6, 7. Um, Daigle I think is also a 77, but uh, should grow at least a little bit during the summer. We'll offer him 850k for three years. I feel like I'll say yes to that. And now look at this guys. I'm checking out two-way skaters. Chaz Lucius, 23 years old, 77 overall. Medium toxic potential available. I don't get it. Obviously at 23, 77, he could be a bust, but I'm sure he's better than a lot of the prospects the Jets signed instead of him. Still, we'll make an offer. Arizona, Vancouver, also interested. Uh, we'll do three years there at max offer, 950K. Let's see what he says. Jet Wu, Kanizev, 25, 78. Honestly, we've got other guys in the HL about that good. Loof's only a 73 at 24. So like, see him not getting signed makes sense. Like he's still very low rated for his age. Lucius, though, should be getting a contract. Now, I see Caden Bankier's available, 23, 79, medium top four. I mean, this guy's almost already good enough to be in NHL. I think, too, it would be kind of fun him playing with Colton Dock on the AHL team. They both played on the Canadian World Junior team. We'll offer him, like, 875 for three years. Sokolov, 79 overall. Sniper. Obviously, the AHL team didn't score much last season, so he might be good on a one-year deal of ARK. Wow, LA Kings are offering us Kopitar. Obviously, you guys say no. We need that money for Kaprizov, at least... Waiting here back what he says. Devin Tays. That'd be a crazy trade. They want a lot there, though. Um, again, I think our defense is actually in a pretty decent spot. Um, Sokolov says yes. Same with Bank here. Boyko as well. Lucius. Zuccarello Verana. I'm going to say no. I'd rather get Kaprizov. And we do. Let's go. 94 overall. Kirill Kaprizov. That's who we wanted. We actually still have 2.5 million in cap space as well. And after getting Kaprizov, guys, we're trying to make a big time trade with the Penguins. They got Carlson on the block still. A6 overall, he had 63 points last year. Obviously a great offensive defenseman. Had them retaining 1.5 million, so this trade will actually go through. Offering up Radish there, who is on a pretty good contract, but I feel like, you know, Magic can replace him on the third line right wing. Cam York, I kind of signed early. 82 overall, he dropped only 14 points last year. This is honestly kind of a cap dump. And then Lavoie there is an extra guy. First round picks next year. I think, you know, Carlson over York really improves our defense. 
Again, Rash is expendable. Also, two Carlsons only got one year left. After this, we'd have a lot more money to spend in the future. See what the Penguins say. Value's way on our side. Trade's accepted. Let's go. Okay, so the first might have been a lot to give up, but again, I want to make sure everything, you know, worked contract-wise. Now, next, you guys are trying to dump some contracts I don't need onto the Avalanche. As you can see, they've only got 26 to 50 contracts, so they could use some players. Trying to get a third-round pick back. We'll see what they say. Trade's accepted. All right, so... They got some guys now, we get a third, works out well. We've actually got four third round picks in this upcoming draft. So we're in the fall now, guys. Drury here still needs a contract. Also, Allen's down 82 overall, but honestly, we have six better defensemen than him. So unfortunately, he'll be in the AHL. Drury's willing to take 875k for one year. I mean, okay, might as well just do that now. First line there, Ehlers, Bedard, Kaprizov. We just signed Kaprizov this summer. Thought about trying to make a trade for him, it cost too much. I ended up signing him for free. I mean, that top line is nasty. Second line even, Hall, Reichel, Schmaltz, I think is very capable. On the third line here, we finally have Consta Helenus making the team. I actually asked my Finnish friend, Ken, how to pronounce his name. So yeah, Consta Helenus. I was saying it way wrong. Uh, Frank Nazar there in the middle, Maggio on the left wing. So kind of a young gun line. Fourth line there is the same as last year, Greer, Jury, Fernandez. I think very solid. Fernandez for sure. Once he grows a bit more, will be a third liner for us with that melee potential. Probably actually a top six eventually. Defensively, we're actually kind of stacked this year. Top four there. Shabbat, Carlson, Jones, Korchinski. I know, you know, Carlson's down to an 84, but you look at his offensive stats, real, still very solid, especially that 95 offense awareness and poise. Korchinski even 85 with 97 passing. Didn't put up a ton of points last year. I'm hoping this year is different. Helson's on 83, paired up with Murphy on the bottom pair. Goaltending there. We run Andre at the trade deadline, 89 overall. Cal Klang there backing him up. In terms of the power play, I mean, power play one there is absolutely nasty. They get a plus five. Power play two even, I think, looks pretty solid. Trying the Avs uh, strategy here. We've got three defensemen because they're all pretty good. Why not just give them a try there? Four man power play, one plus three. Four man power play two, there's a zero. You can see I got Helenus on that unit. Again, I try to make sure every single player is getting some special team time. You guys can see the first PK, that gets a plus five. I got Maggio and Nazar on the second. So again, that's kind of their role. Uh, Fernandez there on the third. I think Drury's on the third three man just because he's really good in the faceoff circle. I realize Lowe's defensive awareness isn't the greatest, so maybe that's a better spot for him. Now, in terms of the HL team, they're kind of stacked too. Tanner Howe, obviously Bedard's teammate of Gina. Hope he'll make the NHL soon play with him. Play with Kurchev and Sokolov for now. We got Lucius in free agency somehow. Iskakov there, Hayes. I mean, the bottom six, you got Doc, Bork, Bank here. I think all three of these guys were on the Canadian Hall Junior team. Uh, fourth line there, solid Oliver Moore. Finally, uh, getting some ice time. Nolan Allen's an 82 in the AHL. Uh, even Vlasic, 79. Both those guys could be on the NHL team next year if we decide to trade away a couple guys. I think uh, Carlson's definitely just going to be like a one-year thing. We'll let him go to free agency. Uh, Daigle there, 81 overall already. So uh, definitely going to be the backup next season. Uh, I think, you know, Clang probably gets something for. So again, the team looks to be in a pretty good spot. I'll show you guys the ratings here before we get started with the sim. As you guys can see there, we've got 99 offense now, which is pretty nuts. 91 defense and 88 goaltending. So... Hopefully this team can make a run at it this year. Let's see what happens. And actually, guys, before we get started with this, I almost forgot I have to do some contract extensions. So Taylor Hall here, I mentioned I want to keep until he retires with Bedard. Uh, two years, 4.5, I think is pretty fair. He'll probably say yes to like two years, 4 million. He's 34 years old. Um, hopefully he does at least save us a bit of money. Korchinski could have a big year. Uh, I want to get him locked up. Three years, 4.8. Okay, I mean, we got six years left of this thing. Five and a half potentially for six years. I think it would be a pretty good contract for him as he gets better. Carlson, again, we're just going to let go after this season. Nazar also could be better this year. Two years, four. I don't really see him asking for more than that. He doesn't really have the ice time to kind of put up the numbers. Demand more than four million. Hellison, two years, a million bucks. That's actually insane for 83. Very, very good deal. If he was like on the open market, he'd be asking for probably four or five million. Even Vlasic here currently making a million bucks. He wants 900k for two years. That's actually really good. Um, especially, you know, if he ends up being a sixth defenseman for us based on trades or whatever. Oh my, look at this, guys. I just finished saving through the preseason. Caprice almost have had a huge game against the Preds. Ends up to 12 points there in seven games. Hoping to keep that up during the regular season. But, of course, we're now waiting for the contract signings. Vlasic said yes. Same with Hellison. Both those were great contracts. Taylor Hall said yes. And Korchinski. So, I think that's everyone made an offer on and looks good. All right, guys. So we're now at the end of summer here with a record of 2013 and 1. Pretty solid. We're actually tied with the Stars and the Coyotes for first place there in the division. Let's take a look here. Ehlers leading score over a point per game. I love that. Obviously, prefer for Bedard, but that's okay. Kershaw there, almost a point per game. AHL team, again, isn't doing that great. Uh, they're third last in the division. Do we need, like, a new AHL head coach? Because on paper, the AHL team is stacked. I mean, the head coach is a B-, 74% cast staff chemistry. He looks to be pretty good for an AHL coach, aside from the bad offense. But his specialist there is defenseman. Associate coach, let's see. He's also got D minus offense, so maybe just no good. Oh wow, the assistant coach as well has terrible offense, so 
Maybe that's what it is. You know what, guys? I'm gonna fire the HLI coach here. They're simply not doing good enough. And this guy's stupid, guys. So I was gonna promote the associate to interim head coach before I went and hired a new one, but I have to make him the head coach. That is the dumbest thing ever. And now look who's available, guys. Joe Pavelski here. Rolls AHL head coach. Maybe he'll agree to be the associate coach because the season has already started. That'd be kind of fun. All right, so Pavelski said no because he wants to be a head coach. I kind of figured. Just got an interesting trade here, guys, from the Bruins. Fifth round pick for Jack Jury. I mean, he's our fourth line center. I'm really not sure why I would randomly give him up. Edmonton basically giving us the same thing. They also want to swap thirds. We're approaching the trade deadline here. Uh, still in a playoff spot, which is good to see. I guess the like, assistant GM must put Jury on the trade block. But as you guys can see, we're currently third place in the division. Uh, we're a point back the Stars for second. Five points back the Avalanche, but we have three games in hand. So we're definitely still right in the thick of it. Uh, let's see, but Darzan Arlene score, love that. 65 points in 60 games. AHL-wise, Kershev there's got 38. AHL team, 58 points. Okay, so they're actually like kind of close to being a wildcard team. They got a couple extra games, but we'll see if, you know, firing the head coach helps them out or not. Again, trade deadline here. I don't think we have too much cap space, but we are definitely a buyer. We'll see. You know, if there's the right move to be made, we're going to make it. I try not to be too quiet ever at the deadline. Um, Shifley, Hellbuck there, both one year left. So kind of what was expected to happen this year before, of course, they both got extensions. Chikrin, Uyghur, Hurdle, McCann, Gustafson, Askarov, interesting, now an 87. Not much value either, honestly. Two years left at 1.7. Jeez, that is such a good contract. A7 overall goalie. Uh, Brandon Montour, Mark Stone. I'm taking a look at Andre's stats right now, guys, because if he's not playing that well, I'm immediately going to go after Askarov because we're saving $5 million in doing so. 908291. I mean, that's pretty good. But for five million bucks less, we get a scare off. Ooh, 887386. Now, uh, the president had a great team, so that's probably a big reason why. And now check this out, guys. The Philadelphia Flyers have Sidney Crosby on the trade block. I know people always say I trade for Crosby every time, but I mean he's on the Philadelphia Flyers, which I don't think would ever happen. I think it makes sense for us to save him, you know, from his rival team. Also, too, if you guys watched you know, the first game of the NHL a couple nights ago, Crosby versus Bedard. If you guys didn't know, Crosby was like, you know, Bedard's favorite player growing up. I think it'd be really cool if we bring Crosby onto the team, have Bedard play with his childhood idol, maybe win a Stanley Cup with him this season. He's making 5 million bucks. We retain half. That's only 2.5 million. Could be like our fourth line center at worst case. He's 83 overall. You guys can see he has lost some X factors, which is cool to see due to his drop in rating. He's got 34 points still in 62 games. So honestly, isn't that bad for the kid. I feel like he's definitely slowed down a bit more than he would have in previous games. So, honestly, what are we looking to go up here for Sid? I would say just draft picks. We've got four thirds. Um, would, like, our third and the Avs third get it done? Again, the Flyers definitely have to retain 50% on this. And that would make it go through. The two thirds, though, do not look to be enough. Maybe I'll throw in Misiak here. 22 years old, still only a 67 with medium time high potential. Uh, see if there's like another prospect that we potentially could want. Honestly, I'll throw on these two meme 7 Ds just as freebies. I don't know, two-thirds and an okay prospect for Sid the Kid. He's getting up there in age. Maybe the Flyers say yes just to get something. They're actually in a playoff spot right now, so I guess they just don't want Crosby. And they say no to that deal, okay. Uh, they basically don't retain the salary unless it's a better offer. Third this year plus a second next year. With all the prospects, the value's now quite heavily on our side. Trade still rejected. Interesting. Not only retain the salary, even though we're literally at the trade deadline. See, that doesn't make any sense. And they have $20 million there in cap space. All right, guys, we're going to try a third and fourth round pick this year, second next year, plus Misiak there for Crosby. Come on. Trade still rejected. They don't retain the salary. I hope this isn't a glitch. Like, it doesn't make sense. The value stuff on our side is on the block. Expiring deal. There's really no reason why they should not want to keep this. We'll also add a fifth round pick just to try and make the value even more on our side. Okay, so we really had to overpay there. I don't know. I feel like they're being pretty stingy um, for how much cash they have and being at the trade deadline. They have to pay them for like the next month and a half, not the whole year. That seems strange. And I just noticed Brock Besser on the block here. Had four goals last night for the Canucks. Not too bad. Also, Freddie Anderson now on the Canucks. Also on the block. Pretty uh, low value there. But again, I think we'll just stick with Andre for now. All right, guys. So the trade deadline's now over. I just made that one move there for Crosby. Uh, Mira Ferraro going to the Washington Capitals. Neil Pionk to the Panthers. Jason Zucker there to the LA Kings. Bro, Dean to the Canucks for Besser. So Besser returns home there to Minnesota. Patty Kane back on the Rangers. Let's see anything else. Washington there got a first round pick for Jacob Verana, so his stock went way higher. Jersey, the Florida Panthers, Yamamoto, the Canucks, Hurdle, the Boston Bruins. That's big for two first round picks. They also got Tarasenko with Hurdle. That's crazy. Jake DeBrus there to the Hurricanes. Montreal Canadiens there got a first round pick for Brandon Montour. Pretty big return. Zutterland there, the Devils. I think the Sharks are just completely selling, acquiring a ton of picks. 
Uh, the Penguins got a first round pick for Pierre Olivier Joseph. Provorov there to the Kings. Sprung to the Ducks. Provorov actually went to the Wild first, then got flipped to the Kings. Interesting. But yeah, this trade here was huge. Hurdle and Terry Sanko were two first. All right, guys, so looking at our forward group here, deciding where to put Crosby in. Obviously, not going to touch the top six. Looking at the bottom six here, I'm honestly just concerned with plus minus. Maggio's a plus nine. Nazar minus one. Hellenius there's a plus three. Greer plus four. Drury's a minus four. And then Fernandez actually a plus five. So even though Drury's really good in the face-off circle there with 90 face-offs, he's coming out for Sid the Kid, who honestly is also pretty good in the face-off circle. Yeah, he's got 88. So uh, pretty much just a better version of him. Now, is Sid really going to play fourth line for us? I don't think so. I feel like, let's see, Sid's got to get on that third line. Maggio there's got 28 points. Nazar's got 19. And then Hellenius there's got 21. And Zarb was also a minus one. So honestly, for the last month and a half, I think we're just going to do that there. That way, uh, Sid can play a bit more. All right, guys, so the regular season is now over. We finished the record there, 46, 28, and 8. 100 points exactly on the year. We're going to be playing the Avalanche in the first round. AHL team. All right, even after firing the head coach. Actually, you know what? They have a chance because they're currently tied with the Moose there. And I'm pretty sure there's four teams from each division that make the playoffs. Maybe the AHL team will somehow squeak in again this year. Kershaw, 48 points, 69 games. I think he's done growing now, so that'll be his last year with us. Leading score in the NHL is Connor Dart, 87 points, 82 games. Look at that. He put up 87 points the year we acquired Sid. Pretty fitting, I'd say. Behind him, Kaprizov also over a point per game. Ehlers just shy there with 80. Uh, you got Carlson putting up 75 points. That's why we got him. He's actually down to 83 now. Uh, he's a point producer, so I think that's a big reason why those guys had good years. Reichel, 64, is still playing well. Hall just shy. Schmaltz, 54. Jones almost had 50. Same with Shabbat. Maggio, 33 on the third line. is not bad. Korchinski, I don't know why is not producing like point wise 97 passing maybe just the offensive awareness isn't high enough i feel like he should be doing better um sid the kid crosby has somehow glossed right over he's got 39 points in 83 games um i think that's with us he's got oh wow he had five points in 21 games with us why is he doing so bad he actually lost two x factors since i got him um all right minus 20 interesting Interesting, interesting. Okay, maybe he'll just be like a super fourth liner at this point for us. And now look at the goalie stats here, guys. Jake Andre at a 9-1 save percentage, 2-8-3 goals against. That's actually very, very solid. HL Daigle here, 9-1-7, 2.5. His rookie here in the HL, I believe. Or maybe it's his first year starting, but uh, still, really, really good. HL forwards. So yeah, like, I mean, there are playing 69 games, but to not even have a single guy put up 50 points. We did have a lot there, you know, 40 plus. Um, still, I think, you know, they could be doing better. And now look at the entire league here, guys. Ovechkin had 108 points at 41 years old. So he's still thriving on Lake Sid. Uh, Goudreau, 105. Robertson, McDavid, Drysaddle, Kucherov, Matthews. All had 100 plus. Stammer there and Panarin, both 99. Goals, Ovechkin was 62. Continues to get it done, even at 85 overall. You can see he's still got that gold 1T. Uh, probably because he's got, you know, 62 goals. Even though he's 41, he's not losing that quite yet. Uh, Kel McCarr there, led defenseman in scoring, 89 points. And Carlson there did finish third in defensive scoring, which is nice. In terms of the goaltenders, hope for the most wins with the Talos Stars after we trade them away. Oh my gosh, that's just so typical. Uh, save percentage here though for a starter, Carter Hart, 9-1-6. And then goals against here goes to Swayman, but actually Hart tied him there. And he had more wins and a better save percentage. So I think Carter Hart taking home the Vesna. And then finally here guys, looking at rookie skaters. Ty Voigt with the Leafs, 66 points. His rookie season, 83 overall. Not bad. And Gavin McCann, of course, his rookie year. Had every X Factor but his own ability. He put up 64 with the Wild. Also, two Cole Eisman and uh, Leonard there finally make it to the NHL. They had 52 points, respectively. Ryan Suzuki, 51. Actually, finally grew a bit. Last year, he was always a buzz, so that's good to see. And now, in terms of the entire league here, guys, the Lightning dominated 122 points. Uh, we actually finished sixth there in the entire league. Unfortunately, still third in our division. That just shows you the central. All this done is pretty good. Florida there at 15 miss. Winnipeg in at 19. Okay, so I said how the Central was good, but I guess we're just top heavy. Flames last in NHL, goals for, goes to the Lightning. We were fifth though, so we like that. Goals against, the best in the NHL is the Lightning. And we were actually at the top of the page, so pretty good season. I think that's the first time we've been, you know, top of the page in both goals for and goals against. But as I mentioned to you guys earlier, we're playing the Avalanche here in the first round. Hopefully we can get by them, actually going a deep playoff run here for once. And so now looking at the ads here, guys, they still have Landis Cobb, McKinnon, and Ranton on that first line. All 90 plus. McKinnon 96, Ranton 95. Ridiculous. Nachushkin, Colton, Lekkinen. Lekkinen's 87, Colton's 86. That top six is nasty. Even the third line, Olsen, Lowry, Boyd's very capable. Fourth line's not bad at all. Defensively, they got Byram, McCarr, Gerard, Taze. That top four might be the best in the NHL. And then goaltending, okay, that's their weak spot. Jonas Johansson is 78, Halberg's 78. They have no goaltending. So. 
hopefully Connor Bedard, you know, the rest of our star forwards can just kind of pop off, keep us in this game, because I think on paper, the Avs forward and defense are actually both better than us. So first two games here, guys, in Denver, Colorado, we get a 7-3 win and a 5-3 loss. I mean, I'll go 1-1 one one through the first two, head home to Chicago, 3-1 loss, and a 4-0 win. All right, 2-2, two 1-0 two, loss, very, very close. Can we force game seven here at home? And we do, we win 6-3, so uh, head to Colorado now for game seven. Let's send this thing period by period. Let's go. Um, we're up one nothing. Taylor Hall. And still one nothing. Third period. 2 nothing win. Connor Bedard with the insurance goal. We are moving on to round two. That was a close one, I thought, honestly. After we were uh, down three games to two, that was it for us. And we've got the Dallas Stars here in the second round. So how cool is that? Andre and Hofer are going to be playing against each other. Uh, Bedard, they're averaging a little over point per game. We like that. So the Dallas Stars here. Got Robertson, Hintz, and Sagan on the first line. Johansson, Domi, Stankoven, uh, Marchment, Johnston, Nosen there, Steele, Delandria, and Ben. I'm surprised Johnston hasn't grown at all. I believe he starts out at 82. Uh, Heiskin on the top pair with Montour. They just picked up the trade deadline. Heronic, Lungfist, Harley, and Clifton. I mean, this team's solid. They got Hofers down 86, Forsberg. So, yeah, the team's good. I think on paper, I feel like we probably have an edge, but uh, it's very, very close. So definitely, you know, could go either way. They do have the home ice advantage for so the first two games here. Are in Dallas, and we get a 5-3 win, a 5-2 win. Let's go. Up to nothing, headed home to Chicago. 4-2 win. Are you kidding me? We sweep the Dallas Stars, who won our division. I think we're second in the entire NHL. That is awesome. So uh, we're currently 8-3 now in the playoffs. And look at this, guys. In the third round, we got the Anaheim Ducks in the conference final. Of course, Bedard's going to be facing off against the number two in his draft class in Leo Carlson. Uh, he's currently got 17 points there in 11 games. So taking a look at the Ducks. Speaking of Carlson, 8-8 overall now. On that first line, no zone ability, but he has franchise potential. Playing with Zegers and Terry. Sprong, McTavish, Duclair. Lundstrom, Strom, Fast, Perot, Bemstrom, and Yanmark. Defensively here, Zelliger now an 89. Playing with Dreisler, a 92. Oh my, he just popped off. Uh, Pesci, Forsling, has a solid second. Mintikov only an 83. And then Chromiak there, 84. Interesting. Okay, so that defense is very, very good. Gibson still an 85 there. Dossel backing up an 83. Honestly, their strong suits their defense. I think their forwards, you know, they got some good players for sure. Like, they got two 90s in Zegers, McTavish, their one-two punch. Don't have as much forward depth as us, though, I don't think. Defensively, they got the edge. Goal timing wise we have the edge. So, honestly, just like the last two matchups, this should be a good series. I'll send this thing period by period. Also, too, I see we have the home ice advantage. And in the first game, it's 2-2. Korchinski, Shabbat, Drysdale, Terry for them. So, the defenseman there got most of the points. 3-3, uh, three, three, Zegers for them, Schmaltz for us. After the third, are you kidding me, Zellweger? Power play game winner. All right, so down one early, but, um, you know, it was a close game there. Hopefully, we can at least take one win at home. If not, we're not in a good spot. So here we go, guys. Game two, we're up one nothing early. Maggio, 3-1 now. Greer and Kaprizov sprung for them. And 4-2. Maggio gets an empty enter for a second. Lundstrom gets one, but not going to be enough. So luckily, they tie the series up. So here we go, guys. Game three now in Anaheim. 1-1, Nazar Zegris. After two, Kaprizov, Maggio. We're up a couple. And we hold on there. Okay, I was a little bit worried. The way it like it kind of simulates, the score is hidden. So you have a couple seconds there where you don't know what happened. Obviously, you're just kind of waiting for the reveal. Uh, I feel like it just makes it a bit more stressful. But uh, we're now up 2-1 here in the series. Game 4. Can we take two games in Anaheim? And 0-0 after 1. They had a power play. 3-0. Reichel, Carlson, Bedard. Let's go. Bedard's been kind of quiet, honestly. And we hold on there for a 3-0 win. Andre gets the shutout. So that is huge. 3-1 series lead now. We've won the last three games. Andre hasn't let in more than, I think he's letting three goals in three games. So he's got a one goal against the last three. I don't want to jinx him, but hopefully he can keep that up. Game five here is back home in Chicago. And we have a one nothing lead there thanks to Greer, the fourth line. Uh, Hull there makes it 2 nothing. Couple former Bruins. And 4-1. to one. Bedard empty netter. Reichel, let's go. We beat the Ducks in five. And for the first time, we're moving on to the Stanley Cup final. This is also the first time we've been in the conference final. I think the first we made it was the second round before. So... Who are we going to play? I actually haven't even seen the East, what the matchups were. And we got the New York Rangers here. I accidentally simmed game one, but it was a 3-1 win. Let's go. We take those accidental wins. Okay, so uh, Bedard, 24 points, 17 games. You like to see that from the captain, the generational player. Obviously, too, this is an original six matchup. Chicago versus New York. Very, very cool. I'm curious to see what their team is looking like at this point. So Panarin's still on 94 overall. That's ridiculous. The fact Kane's back on the team, facing off against his old team in Chicago is kind of crazy. He's down to an 80, still has couple of passing X factors because his puck skills there are still ridiculous. Kako there's an 88 now. Hittle 87. Lafreniere 87. Uh, Kaloran, Trocek, Appleton, Phillips, Rodriguez, Lindblom. 
Okay, so they don't have the depth we do, but, you know, their top six is solid. And now defensively here, guys, they got Condre Miller and Fox in the top pair. Fox is a 96, just an absolute beast. Uh, Trubouche and Joseph Schneider. Goaltending-wise, Shesterkin still in net, 92 overall. The Smith macking him up. So, they definitely have the goaltending edge. I mean, defensively, they got the best D-man in Fox, but I think, like, we actually have the better D-core. And then forward-wise, I like us as well. I just want to see uh, the ratings here. Hopefully, they actually stay up this game. I'm not actually sure if I've looked at it. So... We've got 100 offense now after adding to the kid, 90 defense, 88 goaltending. They've got 95, 96, 91. So we have five better offense, but surprisingly, we've got like eight worse defense. That has to just be due to Adam Fox. And then their goaltending, of course, we kind of already knew it was going to be better with Shesterkin. But we got a 1-0 uh, series lead. We've actually got the home ice advantage as well. So game two here in Chicago. Can we keep it going? And 2-0 for them. Hiddle, of course. Patty Kane has to do that to us. Are you kidding me? 4-4. What an answer. Ehlers with two. Carlson won, Kaprizov, Zibanejad also gets two for them. Both those guys looking for hat-tricks here in the third. Also potential game winners. And of six to five, they take it. Lindblom, Joseph there got the game winner. Nazar added one for us. Unfortunately, of course, uh, could not get to that game-winning goal. So, uh, series tied 1-1. One one. I mean, honestly, in the Stanley Cup final, you take that. Head to Madison Square Garden now. Game three in New York. Can I get the lead? After one, two to one for us. Schmaltz and Kaprizov, Panarin for them. 3-2 now, Kaprizov again, Phillips for them, I actually didn't even notice Phillips on that team, and 4-2 we hold on, Bedard there with the power play goal against Sturkin. so uh, we take that for sure, 2-1 series lead, if we can make it 3-1, I'd be much more comfortable than if the uh, New York here can tie it up, so game 4 here guys is huge, very pivotal, and they have a 2-0 series lead, Hiddle Lafreniere, 3-0, we have to have a huge third here, answer back, and no, 5-0 <laughs> loss. Kako, Zibanejad, yeah, they just wanted that more, tie the series up. And so here we go, guys, game five in Chicago. We win this, we get the series lead back. And we're up 2-1 early, Schmaltz, Shabbat, Trocek for them. 4-1, uh, Korchinski, Ehlers, come on, hold on. 5-3, they pushed, but luckily uh, Kaprizov there kind of got that insurance goal, and we were able to hold on. They actually outshot us too, so I think Andre playing pretty well here. And we are now one win away from being Stanley Cup champions. I honestly, the thing I want to see most, guys, is Conor Bedard, Passing off the Stanley Cup to Sidney Crosby. If they don't have Sid as an option, I'll be so pissed. Also, we gotta win the game first, right? We got two games left. We gotta win one of them. Please, please, EA, let this happen. Game six in New York. And we're down one. Condre Miller. We're down two. A lot of time left, though. We could definitely, you know, make a comeback of a power play. We need one here. Unfortunately, cannot get it. Shots, they're pretty equal. We actually have a slight lead. They have a power play, and they get another goal there from Hiddle. I mean, unless it's going to be a Toronto-Boston collapse, down three with less than 10 minutes to go. It's not looking good for us, guys. Reichel gets one. Five. Seth Jones gets one. There's no way. Four minutes, three to two. Oh, the, oh my gosh. When that goal popped up, I thought for a half a second it was us. I thought we actually tied it up. Unfortunately, Schneider there. Make sure they hold on. Game seven, Stanley Cup final. This is what you play for. At home, original six matchup. Come on, like we couldn't write it up better than this. Here we go, first period, one nothing lead, Taylor Hall, second period. Uh, okay, still one nothing. we're out shooting them. Power play, that's huge. Um, we can't convert though. Oh, Connor Bedard immediately after. We're literally almost doubling their, sh we are doubling their shots. 37 to like 16 it was. Two nothing, halfway through the third period. Come on, Bedsy, get us another. Five minutes to go, it's still two nothing. Two and a half, one and a half, 35 seconds left. All right. I think I'm just going to play it, guys. I want to make sure I can, like, you know, hand the Stanley Cup off. Plus, I want to feel the team. 30 seconds left, two nothing. All right, so for some reason, we got the third line out there, the young gun line. And right there, guys, you can see them getting the Stanley Cup ready. Two nothing lead, less than 30 seconds left. And look at that. Karma Dyer just took the goal lead in the playoffs. Uh, was that Pavel Buchnevich was actually the leader somehow, even though I don't even think he's still playing because he didn't show his team. Ooh, Ehlers, what a steal. 20 seconds now. We got the full pressure. In the second final, Carlson here. Just, uh, we're basically uh, puck ragging in the offensive zone. Ehlers, just hold it. Ooh, that would have been so bad. To Kaprizov, nice save from Shesterkin. Bedsy's out there with three seconds left. Okay, gets tied up, but doesn't matter. Two seconds, one. There you have it, guys. Chicago Blackhawks are once again Stanley Cup champions. Led by the Phenom and Conor Bedard. Very cool too. I think Eric Carlson just won his first ever Stanley Cup. Of course, uh, Crosby gets his fourth. You love to see that. And look at that, guys. Bedard also got the Conn Smythe Trophy. 
hopefully his first of many. We still got, you know, six years left here to try and win. One or two more Stanley Cups really turn this thing, I guess, into like the second Chicago dynasty. Obviously, the first being uh, with Kane and Taze. We can do another one here with Bedard and, you know, Kaprizov and Ehlers. I think that'd be pretty awesome. And look at that too, guys. You got the red confetti coming down, not blue. They finally fixed it in this game. And right there, you have Bedard right number 98 in the C for Chicago Blackhawks. Hoisting the Stanley Cup. You love to see that. His first year, too, off his ELC. I really thought last year was our best year to win it, but uh, I'll take it no matter when it comes. Again, I'm really hoping Crosby's available as, like, the first choice here. I think that'd be so cool. And he is. Let's go. Bedard passing off the Stanley Cup to his idol growing up in Crosby. You can't. Come on, guys. That is just perfect. I mean, Crosby wearing Chicago jersey, I'm not going to lie, is a little bit weird to see, but uh, still a very cool moment. And now next year, I think he's got to give it to Seth Jones. He's been on the team for a while, struggled through some bad years. And I'm wondering too, Seth Jones has it here. Who do we give it to next? You know what? It's got to be Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall never won a Stanley Cup until now. The reason why I wanted him on the team was to actually get his first Stanley Cup. And Hall's not available. That is just... I will say he got it fourth, and uh, we'll give it to Kaprizov next. Kaprizov, of course, another big part of this Stanley Cup win. And right there, you guys can see all the players that lifted the Stanley Cup staying next to each other. Pretty cool shot. And right here, you guys get the Stanley Cup pick. Bedard there right in the middle. Seth Jones next to him. Then you got Sid. I can see Ehlers on the side. Same with Hall. Carlson there in the back. Shabbat, I think I just noticed too. Very, very cool. Um, I think we got a bit of a glitch here at the Stanley Cup lighting because the top there does not look like the bottom. Uh, not ideal, but uh, still, we got the Stanley Cup, so can't be too upset. And right there, you guys can see the names. Chicago Blackhawks, 2026, 2027. It does suck, so it still shows, like, the real-life last year winner next to you, opposed to in-game winner. But Conbertard, captain. You can see Crosby there, his name as well. Uh, you love that. And I just realized, guys, I totally forgot to check the AHL team. Did they even make the playoffs? They did not. They actually lost out on a tiebreaker. The Moose, there, the same amount of points. But uh, that's okay. I think I'll take the Stanley Cup over the Calder Cup any day. So... Uh, we'll keep simming here, make sure like everything finishes up. As you can see, Stanley Cup champion, Chicago Blackhawks, love it. And the Calder Cup champions there with the Coachella Firebirds. But Dard actually had 32 points in 23 playoff games, so absolutely popped off. He was doing better in the playoffs than he was in the regular season, which honestly, you kind of need to win the Stanley Cup. Kaprizov as well, tore it up. Ehlers there, a little under a point per game. The plus minus on that top line, that was ridiculous. I just noticed too, Bedard didn't take a single penalty in the playoffs. Like, that's crazy. Uh, Carlson did the same thing. Not a single penalty there, 17 points. Uh, Maggio as well, not a single penalty. Uh, you love that. Just guys playing clean, especially in the playoffs. You don't expect that too much. Crosby, you can see, only had six points. So I think it was a one and done, you know, run with him. We got the cup, but I don't think I'll be bringing him back. Goaltending wise, Ottinger really performed for us. Four shutouts at 9.3 save percentage and 2.33 goals against. And I look at the playoff tree here, guys. Of course, we know our run to it, but uh, you had the best of seven with the Avs, swept the Stars, Ducks in five, then a best of seven with the Rangers. Rangers there with the Flyers in seven, Jacks in six. And then the Lightning in six as well. Finally, here, guys, take a look at the awards. Stanley Cup champs looks good. Um, obviously, got the Clancy's Campbell there too. Individual awards. Ovechkin got the Art Ross Trophy. I mean, that's still so crazy to me. At 41, Drysdale got the heart. Ovi definitely gets it. If at 41, he gets most points and most goals. Um, McCarr, James Norris, Marner, Lady Bing, Ty Voigt there, Calder, Bedard, of course, Con Smythe, Carter Hart got the Vesna, but Vasilevsky got the William Jennings with Brassois, uh, Matt Benning there, Bill Masterton, Seattle coach Jack Adams. Rossi there, Selkie, interesting. I didn't think his defensive game was that good. Uh, McDavid, though, Ted Lindsay, okay. And then Ovi, of course, Reeves Richard. Ovi not getting the Ted Lindsay or the Hart, uh, definitely surprising. Again, AHL wise, Coachella won the Calder Cup. Uh, most points there goes to Sachin. Kirk, though, MVP. Gogol had most goals. Picard, best rookie. Ty Nelson, best defenseman. Uh, Riddick there, best goalie with the Griffins. Ty Nelson also got MVP of the playoffs. Big year for him. Jaeger, sportsmanship. Mikola there, community involvement. And then. Amon there, lowest goals against. And as much as I would have liked to go for back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, there was some sort of glitch or bug with my game, and I actually lost all of my save files. So everything I did in the following summer did not matter. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that road to the cup there, building the black hooks around the dart. If you did, leave that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.